The power of words. So many people tend to ignore or forget about it. They can't or don't have the tools to realize that words are at their most effective when they're used subtly, which is one of the reasons why most don't garner that expertise in the first place. A lot of those who do know that power, sadly, are also people who misuse it to lie, to circumvent, to fill their pockets with pity and outrage cash or attract their 15 minutes of fame. The best become the ones telling you to fear certain pockets of humanity from a podium. The worst are the ones who use it as a sledgehammer and congregate in a posse, hiding behind good causes to do evil. Too much? My name is Menos Khan, and this is the Italian Pod. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Italian Pod, which has UK too. I'm uh, Menos Khan, your host, and here are our guests, uh, starting from the British man himself, uh, Lord Rag, Will and Smith. Hello, I buy you can't have nice things. Yeah, he is. Now we have the guy from Mexico, even though he was born in the USA. Why did you cross that border anyway? Eagle Sirius. Hello, everybody. And oh. yeah, I cross over just to go to work in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then the uh, guy is like, it is. Uh, then we have EJ Spurrell from Canada, owner of Black Trident TV. Did I spell that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, EJ Spurl from yes. Canada, owner of uh, Black Trident TV, Black Trident Media. All right, and then we have from Game Journalist Network, Aaron Pabon. Welcome, oh. Aaron. Hello. <laughs> Hello, we got we got like a little League of Nations going on here. Uh, a little what? League of League Nations of or something. On here. We can give League the of UN Nations. Ah, League of money. Nations. Okay, uh, let's. Just the League of Nations. <laughs> ah, the League of Nations. Okay, let's hope we don't yeah. end up like the League of Nations because you know. Oh yeah, oh. If history taught us anything. That's that's not good. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> also, let's hope we don't end like uh, up like the UN, uh, like uh, actually fighting uh, <laughs> windmills. <laughs> and I guess that. I guess that brings us. What? The windmills did nothing wrong. <laughs> okay, so you're going to be our Sancho Panza, Eagle Ceres, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to talk about uh, for us, even if uh, no one is listening, I really want to get this going because I wanted to talk about this stuff. It's really driving me crazy. It's been driving me crazy since... Um, since I heard, uh, did you hear about that poor girl with the Steven Universe fandom? The the girl, uh, the, yeah, yeah, Paige Pez. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty familiar with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so... I've only recently been caught to speed on that, but yeah. Yeah, basically the um, the thing is, after I read about what happened, like with this poor girl that uh, that tried to suicide because of what the, the like the. The avalanche of bad words and uh, everything else, threats uh, and stuff that got her way just because she drew something. The, that that was mad bubbling for to me because uh, it made me realize that a lot of people don't know or maybe they don't realize they forgot the power of words because words have power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, words. Words. I mean. It's sad what happened. I mean, because uh, you know, this was just a, this was just a girl online, you know, yeah. making fan art. You know, fan art. and you know, fan art's been around for a long time. Uh, and you know what? I, I I am I'm no fan of you know harsh criticism, but we do have criticism for a reason. But this was just outright bullying when you have people going out of their way to insult this girl's art, and some of it wasn't even criticism anymore. It was just you know they were just attacking her. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. no! It was straight up. What ended up, uh, and it was more than just her fan art too. She, uh, the girl had posted some pictures of herself uh, cosplaying an Asian character, and they started uh, accusing her of, ye- of yellow face. Yellow face? Do any of these people yellow not face. go to conventions yeah. or anything like that? I mean, yeah, like I guess not. Like yeah. cultural appropriation? I didn't know about that part. 
Oh, yeah, oh. no, no, no. All she did, like, she didn't put any actual yellow face makeup or anything, you know what I mean? But um, she she cosplayed an, uh, an Asian character, um, or or maybe even mm-hmm. not a, a, a character themselves, but she dressed, like, in a traditional Asian style. And uh, some pictures and like some of the some of the attacks against her I saw on that were just just horrendous. Like I couldn't believe it. Uh. Yeah, well, what's, happen- well, what's happening in this case, uh, and as you've already pretty much pointed out, is bullying. It's pe- it's some of the community first going against her with the whole you didn't draw her the right way. She's supposed to be dra- drawn this way. And I want to give props to the uh, the author or the creators of the Steven Universe cartoon like to shaker, actually yeah. standing up for the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that but I didn't hear about. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but I also I also heard that like he backpedaled at least one of the two. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read I, that. I think they sent a tweet and then they they realized well maybe I should not have said that. Let me I'll say it again and. But at least he made it very clear that he deleted the tweet instead of just deleting it and hopefully... Yeah, no but uh, what worries me, what he said uh, after, he said, uh, I'm gonna read this, uh, it's live, like it's uh, exact to it. I have listened to concerns and I agree, my earlier statement was vague and reductive. Thank you to everyone who made me aware. And the thing is, what was vague and reductive about this? Fan artists can create whatever art they want, and everyone has the freedom to criticize it for any reason. However, bullying is not criticism. So, wh- what part about this was vague and reductive? Uh, I don't. What was? I don't, I'm not familiar with what his original tweet was. So, yeah, I, I just I read it to you. This, that this, was his original tweet. Oh, that was the original tweet. Yeah, fan yeah. artists uh, over bullying is not criticism. I don't see okay. the problem. No. No, absolutely not. It sounds like he just got dogpiled and he just didn't want to yeah. deal with it anymore. Yeah. He probably, got, he probably got dogpiled or there is the possibility um, because sometimes if you work in a production house or a company or anything like that, sometimes they will actually ask you to remove a tweet uh, mm-hmm. because of a legal proceeding or something of that nature. It's a possibility. I mean, at this and- point, we can assume. Absolutely, and uh, you know, companies are really concerned about public images, right? So it yeah. would actually take like an HR staff that, or not an HR staff, but um, uh, PR staff that is got, pretty much has no fear about that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. pro- Protein World is a good example there. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking awesome. That was fucking awesome. The thing Protein mm-hmm. World for that uh, for that uh, for that like a uh, big poster with the uh, with the girl with the yellow bikini. There's no, that's Photoshop. That's not a real body. No way anyone can get that kind of body. And well, she did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> yeah, and then, that's she's a pretty Yeah, and then a lot more came out of the woodwork, posting pics uh, and uh, wow. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And then there's uh, that, um, that those game resellers, uh, Direct to Drive. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. those guys. Those guys are pretty yeah. awesome. It's yeah, like, yeah. If, if it's triggering, we'll sell it or some shit like that. They, they were brilliant. <laughs> I actually had to buy something from them just because of that. I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, that's, that's um, that tells a lot about. Uh, yeah, I think most people uh, return like to the first uh, subject. Like we, I want to touch on touch on today. Uh, about mm. the free speech, because a lot of people, when uh, com- it, it happened to me, like uh, you ever heard the term tom policing, right? Tom policing, yeah. Tom policing. Yes. You heard, you heard it in the like in the hashtag gamergate for sure. I've been accused of that just for telling people to not be a dick, or that maybe if you didn't uh, go out into the conversation uh, with swear words and acting like an asshole to the other person, maybe the other person would have been uh, more compliant, like he would have been willing to discuss it to you. And I've been accused of tomplizing and that uh, if free speech means I can say whatever the fuck I want. And I think there is a fallacy with that. But I would like to start with, uh, like... a. Uh, each one of you, one at a time. If we, uh, I wanted to know what free speech means to you. Yeah, it's okay. an easy question. Every question. I <laughs> know. Okay. Um, uh, well, do you want to go first, or? I think um, the free speech should be that I can say whatever I feel if I can disagree with the government, provided I'm not 
lying, so it's no libel, no slander, um, no, generally misleading people or say what I like without fear of arresting the government, which is traditionally how free speech works. Certainly how the um, First Amendment in the USA is worded, along with the, the right to um, free assembly. I should be able to say, I think David Cameron, our Prime Minister, is a colossal bellend. <laughs> now, you may or may not agree with this, but don't forget, he stuck his wang in a pig. Now, <laughs> oh my God. Also, the phrase, wang in a pig, was cleared by a legal department to broadcast on the radio. Marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> but Love I, should, Love but I, should not, I should not be able to say David Cameron committed a particular crime, you know, you know, because that, if, I, if I know for a fact that he didn't commit this crime, so I can't implicate him and say the Brinks Matt robbery, or <laughs> you no, know, he, he did not attempt to. You know, you know, he, okay. Pig. yeah, he, I was, I was saying he, he was not implicated in the uh, seven seven uh, London bombing attacks. You know, I can't say that he was in that if I know that to be false. I mm. mean. That that is obviously a limit because it destroys his reputation, of course, wanging yeah. a pig. So reputation <laughs> may not be that valuable. <laughs> but yeah, there, 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 uh, we say there are limits because if you if you allow everyone just to say whatever they like, well, for one, children get exposed to words they shouldn't hear. Mm -hmm. You know, no, 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 it's not funny when uh, an eight-year-old kid starts dropping the C-bomb. Um, Though an 80 year old is always hilarious and old, like old people swear. Um, but also, uh, oh, I think, oh, I'm drifting. Uh, <laughs> ah! what do you, oh, okay, so but, I. But, but yeah, so I shouldn't, you shouldn't, if you allow people to say whatever they like, they'll say tell you lies and you'll ruin companies' reputations. It's so like, oh, oh, this particular thing, no. So someone said the company I work for, mm -hmm. the product uh, contained flesh eating bacteria. Which okay. is alive, <laughs> then you know that causes a lot of problems. So that's why we have libel and slander laws. Yes. So I guess uh, the thing is, uh, you think um, uh, people should be allowed to say whatever they want, but uh, there should be like uh, systems in place uh, to punish those who lie, something like that. Yes, uh, which which we do have. The libel laws in the UK are quite powerful. Um. If you have to prove that some say um, Joe Bloggs yeah. is, is, our, is, is our character, <clears throat> I say he's a car thief. I have to prove that he's stolen a car. He doesn't have to prove that he's not stolen a car. Or yeah. you know, yeah, from, is, but from yeah. from uh, let me be devil's advocate here. From what I hear, they can be maybe a little bit too trigger happy the laws in the uk because there oh. is a reason if uh, in the south park episode about uh, scientology tom cruise went and say we'll see you in the uk we'll see you in the uk there is a reason for that oh yes our, our libel laws do need some reform there was a guy called um simon singh now yeah. he he had a libel case with um some <clears throat> chiropractors now Chiropractors are brilliant for sorting out your back, but somebody had claimed that it can help with asthma. What? And you know, other breathing difficulties. And he said, No, they can't. You're an idiot. You're <laughs> lying. And they had a big court case, and there was a big thing for libel reform for it. <laughs> yeah, I'll see if I can dredge up the, uh, the dreaded Wikipedia link. Uh, <laughs> okay. Before our sins, uh, okay. While well, you look for it, let's go to uh, EJ. What's free speech to you? Oh God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think it's a very nuanced uh, position, right? Like, for instance, uh, yes, I agree that you should be able to say whatever you like, right? However, um, there is such thing as. Um, being rude or being insightful or sorry, like inciting people, mm -hmm. you know? So if yeah. I, you know, you take the age old um, um, <clears throat> example of yelling fire in a crowded theater. Well, of course that should be against the law. You're putting, you're inciting people to panic. You're inciting, you're putting people in danger, right? Absolutely. Um, now criticism uh, I think is very valid. Uh, however, 
when you get there's a, there's a line with criticism you know we you can sit there and say hey well here's why i think your idea isn't you know is is stupid you know even if you're yeah. going to say it like that right but when you turn around and say well you're stupid because of this idea that's i think in my 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 mind anyway i think that's crossing a line right yeah. it shouldn't be illegal right but um, when you're telling people like, "Hey, kill yourself," things like that. Now that's when we're starting to get into areas of like, yes, you should be able to say these things. However, when you're telling someone to kill your, kill themselves, you're inciting them. You're yeah. trying to, you know, and it's very like it's it's it like it is very um prob- <laughs> problematic. It is very <laughs> problematic. Was that, um, was that really well, difficult to say just now? <laughs> Yeah, that it's really, yeah, that yeah that because of the like effort to say. No. The, there are there are some uh, there are some words that sadly are getting ruined by the way they are used. The, they're they're losing their power. They are losing their power. The yeah, more they use like it to the the more they like they diffuse. Uh, the less powerful they become, like <clears throat> problematic or harassment. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but there's a case here in Canada going on right now. About. Um, uh, this man named Gregory Allen Elliott. Mm-hmm. He's an artist from the Toronto area. And uh, what happened was is he <clears throat> went and he disagreed with some feminists online. He disagreed. He didn't. He wasn't stalking them. He wasn't abusing them. He wasn't harassing them. He got blocked. Um, and because the person who brought this court case against him, yeah. Um, was blocked and he, he, she was still being tagged in conversations that he was talking to other people with. She managed to convince the police that, that this was worthy of uh, criminal harassment, charged him, had him charged. This case has been ongoing for three years now. We're, uh, we're expecting what a final. Fuck. Three we're, we're years? Three years. The guy's, now, the guy's a graphic artist. Okay. He's been banned from using the internet during this entire period. Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, we're we're expecting uh, we're expecting a final verdict in uh, January. If you guys are familiar with Lauren Southern, she covers this very very closely. She's like very dedicated to this, and uh, I myself have actually spoken to a few people involved in the case, and it's it, it's disturbing, and it, and it really sets uh, yeah, a really it's, it's kind of disturbing. Precedent. Hey, yeah, because of maybe but do, does your legal system work with precedents? Like, uh, could this set a precedent? It could. It, it very well could. We're, our legal system is very closely tied with the British legal system. Oh fuck! Right. It uses the same kind of uh, yeah. It uses the same kind of system. <clears throat> you know, uh, our <clears throat> parliament, our, our government is pretty much designed after the uh, um, British government. With you know, there's differences here and there because you know we're more of a uh, separated from the, from the monarchy. But uh, we still have laws. You know, don't deface the queen and whatnot. Right? So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a joke. Um, sort of thing. <laughs> in the UK, all swans belong to the Queen. And there's also a story how, uh, watch out, a swan can break your arm, which is something I think. So someone made a joke of, oh, swans are trying to break the arms of people who disrespect the Queen. <laughs> no swans here. Okay, let's go to the other side of the Pacific Coast. No, wait, we're already in America. Uh, Eagle, what's free speech to you? Uh, free, free speech, that's a lot to talk about, but let's keep it short. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's already sent uh, by both Ra and EJ. It's mm-hmm. uh, having the ability to speak your words, but. Up to a certain point, it comes down to how much you're going to have to police yourself. Because uh, there's going to be people out there that will never understand what you're talking about. As mm-hmm. blunt as you want to be, as politically correct or incorrect as you're going to be, you're going to have the freedom to say what you want to say. But there's going to be a limited amount of people that will actually get your meaning exactly as you wanted to say it. Or will yeah. even try to get it, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there's between the people that want to get it, that naturally get it, and then there's the other side of the coin that, I don't get it, I don't understand, or just <laughs> taking your words and misinterpreting them. Yeah. As, it's, as said before, you know what? Yeah, we see the good examples of free speech every day. You see posters out there for food, for cars, for medicine. 
and you get to think, okay, some of this stuff, it's like, it's pretty clear language, or it, it, it has a good, uh, I want to say, uh, double meaning in some of them, to, uh, a little playful double meaning, which is a lot, which is um, something very uh, useful here in Mexico. There was, I actually saw a, a truck with a, with a Virgin Mobile uh, poster say, uh, basically uh, playing double speak or, do, uh, or uh, double speak <laughs> speaking app. Uh, the it's the, it basically in just to say it cl- uh, in a clean way, it's the it, it's the it's the small print that gets you. Very true. But, but the, Very true. The, the, the more, more more literal translation there, it's like it's it's a small it's a, it's more the little letters that screw you over. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, because uh, the, most people don't realize that. Uh, I think, uh, especially the one would like shout and like to tell you to kill yourself, don't realize that. Uh, I think the. A word. Words are they're most powerful when they're subtle, when they're like uh, you don't even realize. Yeah. What they're doing to you until uh, they persuade you to do something. Well, there is there is the, that old phrase of saying that uh, uh, somebody has a, a gilded tongue or somebody actually has a is silver a silver tongue, a silver, silver tongue. tongue. Yeah. Or somebody's a wordsmith. Their ability to use words to convince you, their ability to uh, get an idea into you that you originally didn't care about, or that it's little by little it gives you a little, little level of interest that eventually grows, either positively or negatively depends on your uh, your value set, or okay. or your interest, if anything. Very true. Okay, now let's go to Aaron. Aaron, what is free speech to you? Well, as someone who has been working in both the arts and has studied journalism, free speech has a lot of meanings to me because, you know, when we look at, like, the art spectrum, like, you know, either as a painter, as a writer, as a creator, uh, in any way, shape, or form, free speech uh, gives you so much liberties to create. Um, It creates culture, it creates creates new ways of thinking, and it's probably one of the most important things we can have. Now, at the same time, you know, I, I work in an industry that is protected by the First Amendment, you know, as a journalist. And with the first with, with the freedom of speech, you have uh, if you ever study journalism, they always tell you, yeah, you have the right to talk about anything. You have the right to say the truth. But that does not give you the right to harass somebody. It does not give you the right to attack people. It does not give you the right to say hateful things. There's also the whole phrase time and place. Like, you know, around my friends, I'll say mean, horrible things. <laughs> but these aren't things I would say in front of other people because, you know, I don't know if that's going to offend somebody. You know, uh, for example, you know, I- I'm going to – I'll say the F word. Uh, I'll say, you know, I- I'll say all kinds of uh, swear words. Mm-hmm. But if there's an eight-year-old kid around, I'm not going to say that in front of him. Unless, you know, he, says, not, unless he says I'm, them I'm, first. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, well then, you, then you throw shade at the parents for being bad parents. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but like, even at like places like Disney, like I'm not going to say these kind of things at Disney, you know, because like you know, you know, there's a time and place for everything. Um, but again, we uh, like in the UK, we do have slander and libel uh, legal uh, laws, and not laws, but like we have legal proceedings in place. Yeah. Because. You know, if if someone says something that is damaging to your character or credibility to your company or anything like that, you can sue for damages that are created in that situation. But again, the reason why this hasn't become a big deal in the legal sense is because sometimes we can back it up with the truth in some way, shape, or form. Um, and if you can counter argue that, sometimes it doesn't go to court. But like, let's say if I decide to say that you know every uh, Ford car is dangerous, I can get sued for uh, slander and libel. You know, but if I have proof in some way, shape, mm-hmm. or form, sometimes it doesn't go to court. You know, yeah. again, it depends on you know what's being said and how it's being said. I'm a firm believer in time and place, but I'm a firm believer in you should have the right to say whatever you want because it does help in the creative sense. So yeah, one of the first rules about comedy that is know your audience. Oh yeah, mm. and I, I used to do stand-up comedy for a couple of years, and uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know it's kind of sad because like you know I actually one of the reasons why I stopped doing comedy was kind of what, what Jerry Seinfeld was talking about not too long ago, which was, you know, 
I, I was kind of afraid of offending people and getting attacked for what I was saying, despite the fact what I was saying was a joke. Um, and, you know, it, it just I just lost interest in it, and I just uh, started, you know, concentrating specifically on journalism. But, you know, it, it's – it's uh, there's a show – I'm not sure if you guys are watching Rick and Morty. Yeah, we're oh, watching Rick and yeah. Morty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We love Rick yeah. and Morty. <laughs> so the thing is, like, uh, um, you know, when you create a show and you create characters – you have to make the, the the goal of of a creator is to make realistic characters to give depth to characters, which means the characters are probably some of them might be politically correct, some might be politically incorrect, but that's what makes them real. And in order to make them real, you might have them say nasty things that you yourself aren't going to say, but that's that character. And guess <laughs> what? I don't. If I'm a creator of something, I don't care about a person's insensitivities or things like that. I'm just trying to create something to tell an entertaining story. Yeah, especially especially if you're a comedian, because old Duckman yeah. used to say you deserve to be challenged by comedy and offended, and it's very telling. I'm glad you mentioned the stand-up comedy and stuff because I want to go to the matter of college because I find it very worrying and telling that uh, uh, most of the PC stuff it's not it's not being pushed like from the from from upside. Like, there is no one uh, trying to censor the people that are this, uh, the common seeds. It's not the government. These are people actually pushing right. to be mm -hmm. censored. I, I read an article on the, on, the Washington, on the Wall Street Journal. They made a survey, and uh, I'm going to just read you the, the lines, like the title. A recent survey reported college students by a margin of 51% to 36% Favor speech codes, as in they favor a code of conduct telling them what they can and cannot say. This is in college. Yeah. I, um, no, I, actually, I actually was at a Halloween party last night, and yeah. I was uh, chatting with a bunch of old uh, college friends of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we actually were talking about this. I'm like, you know, what, what's going on in college? I'm so happy I'm not in college anymore, or anything like that. <laughs> and a friend of mine who was studying philosophy, another friend of mine who's studying psychology, and another friend of mine who's studying who was studying social justice in a legal sense, not as not in the warrior warrior sense. Um, we, we were talking about this, and um, we all kind of agreed. The reason why this is actually a big deal is because when we all entered college, um, we all had this sense of, you know, are we doing this because we want to build our career? Some people are doing that. Some people, when they study certain types of of, uh, of choices like, you know, f uh, philosophy or psychology or things like that, their main motivation is they want to save the world. And and, and that kind of gets stuck in your head a little bit. Now, save slowly you kind of like you – you, you move away from that because, oh, let me concentrate on my career. Let me concentrate on what's going to be good for me. But some people get stuck in this mindset, oh, I'm in college. Oh, I can do anything I want. I'm going to save the world and I'm going to make sure people do what's right and do what's wrong. And understand what's wrong, and sometimes they take it too far. And we're looking at a situation where these people are taking it too far. And I remember mm -hmm. um, one time I was working in a student newspaper, and uh, my girlfriend at the time was doing a comic in in the student newspaper, and mm -hmm. one of the characters for Halloween um, was like it was a Halloween issue, and and. The creator yeah. of the comic book said, "You know what? I can put any I can put any costume I want on you, as punishment." And she changed the art style of some of the other characters, and she put another character in a tutu. But the character was already gay. So and 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 you know, <laughs> you know. So we did this, and we only got mm. one, we got a couple of complaints from people saying that oh, we were being insensitive to the gay culture on campus. We were being sensitive to the gay. And, and and other gendered people on campus and whatnot. And the thing is, is that the character was gay. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we already made a gay positive character and we had people saying we were being offensive to gays all because of one stupid joke. And mm -hmm. and we read the comic, like the joke was like explained otherwise. And I, I wish I wish this was video because I actually have the comic and I would show it to you guys. <laughs> but it was just that ridiculous. And and you're having people who are getting outraged uh, outraged over nothing nowadays. Yeah. And it's starting it's starting at a college level. It's not something I've seen in high school. Like if you go to I've been to high schools a couple of times and 
outraged issues don't don't exist in, in high school as much as they yeah. do. Yeah. So uh, why college? That's the really the thing that baffles me. Why it, college? Yeah. You, I what, have I, a teenage, I, sorry. I have a teenage and, and, daughter. And it's because they're in that mindset that you know, you know, this is the time I can start something. This is the time where whatever I do now is going to be my future. And I think that's what that notion is. I think that's what that motivation is. So well, you were saying, Jay, you have a teenage daughter, so you I, can I, offer some insight, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I can actually offer a little bit of insight here. Um, now, uh, in the Canadian school system, they actually do teach uh, gender <laughs> studies as an elective, right, in, uh, in high school. Now, my daughter's in the 12th grade right now, which is, uh, I, I know 12th grade works different. It, it's her last year of high school. Mm -hmm. And um, what uh, she comes, because she's, she's fairly... She's not quite anti-feminist, but she's very critical of like a lot of the social justice warrior kind of stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she notices that it comes from specific teachers who kind of like the, 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 they will groom the students in a certain way uh -huh. and help them get scholarships for women's studies programs and for social justice programs and stuff like that. Because uh, now like, I don't... I, this isn't a tin, tinfoil hat thing. I'm not saying that they're, you know, plotting to do this. It's more along the lines of, like, they see signs in certain students that they want to bring out. And they're like, oh, hey, you would be great in this environment. So I'm going to bring you here. But then as soon as they get into these colleges, uh, a lot of them are, are uh, and a lot of these professors and stuff like that are focusing so much on what the media is telling them and what, mm -hmm. um, and what, um, sorry, I, I just gapped out there for a second yeah <laughs> <laughs> what the media is telling them and what sociology is telling them now and, and i and it's like what i constantly remind my my daughter is just like sociology isn't an exact science it's a series of quote-unquote best guesses that yeah cover the entire spec but it seems to be going in one particular direction right now especially in terms of colleges now the other thing being with that um you know 51 percent of uh college students want speech codes i'd be interested to see w how that study was gathered and what classes that they focused on yeah, in that me too. study. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a pretty skewed uh, percentage, but uh, maybe, yeah, like you said, they went to particular kinds of colleges because uh, we found, like, uh, there are most... Uh, I think most of the horror stories came, like, from... Uh, Uh, colleges with a long story of social studies, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most horror mm -hmm. story about the well. We also had uh, horror stories about, uh, like, uh, I think uh, the one with the mattress girl was from engineering. I don't remember that much. You know, the um, Rolling I'm Stone. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, well. the ma mattress girl, <clears throat> the ma mattress girl, Emma Selkowitz. She was. Um, I'm not sure what class she was in. Mm. I think she she was in no she was in for a liberal arts degree because that's what she went oh, for liberal arts. Major. That's why she was that's why she was carrying her mattress. It was it was it was an art project for her uh, mm. graduation. Right? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Okay, what a graduation, guys! And uh, going to the to the UK because uh, you uh, you in particular uh, you on the other hand, uh, uh, Ra, you have a, a particular kind of thing. Uh, Concerning free speech, like uh, you, your porn block. Oh, oh wow! Uh, yeah. Your porn block. <laughs> oh yeah. That it kind of worked. Oh, that that's uh, the case of free speech being limited from up to down. So I want to know what your thoughts about it. Well, if the porn's not, well, they say, well, what do you determine to be a legal porn? What the government doesn't like. But if, well, as far as I'm concerned, if all the parties are consenting adults. They know exactly what they're getting themselves in for, so there's no no surprise things where suddenly someone breaks out a riding crop and say, I didn't sign up for this. So everyone knows what they're getting themselves in for. What do I care? You know, <laughs> quite frankly, it's one of these really weird things, because you know, obviously you're familiar with Snapchat and the like. Yeah. yeah you, know, so. you know how... Sorry to tell you this, uh, which one of you has got the teenage daughter? Bad news for you. Teenagers do s silly things. And, um, <laughs> oh, no. I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. You, you may have been one yourself. Um, Once upon or, a time. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what, 
well, what happened is some lad um, said to himself a, a nude selfie to a girlfriend, and suddenly he finds himself on the sex reg- sex offenders register for mm-hmm. distributing. For distributing. Really, this is <laughs> this is a really weird because the age of consent in the UK is sixteen, but. So, in a hypothetical, 16-year-old boy, 16-year-old girl, they, they can decide, yes, I wish to consent to sex with you, or however they word it these days. I don't know with kids. I, I keep away from them because they annoy me. Um, they do perfectly fine. But if one of them decides to send each other on a, a saucy picture, then they're both in trouble. Yeah. The mind kind of boggles. But I can understand why you don't want to send nudie pictures of people who aren't 18 around because that does get a bit creepy and weird yeah (laughs) i can understand i can understand because a company like snapchat because i actually had this conversation with a a, a legal professor not too long ago for a story yeah so understanding behind this is because while okay the edge of consent in the uk is 16 if they were to give each other photos, that in, in the UK, that's legally fine. However, the reason why it becomes a big deal is because they were using a device that has <clears throat> kind of uh, – either it's made in another country where the laws are different, they have a terms of service agreement. And because of a violation of a terms of service agreement, there can be a legal precedence there, i.e. because something like Snapchat – um, I don't know where it was created, but let's say if like uh, two mm-hmm. six-year-old kids used an app that was created in America. America, the age of consent is generalized 18, but depending on the state, it could be 17. However, if they were to share a picture from one person to another, even if they were both of the legal age in the UK, in the United States, that's not the legal age. That's actually considered child pornography, and that could be a big deal because yeah. what if somehow that picture – makes it over to America. Well, that's considered child pornography. Well, and that's the understanding of the legal aspect of there. I do understand that. I understand there can be ridiculousness of it. But again, it also depends on how it went to court. Yeah, I guess, uh, um, uh, like, country you go, things uh, you see. Like, uh, Eagle, you're, uh, uh, I think you're uh, more acquainted with Japan than uh, I think uh, most people here. And uh, do I remember right, or once upon a time, it was legal to possess child pornography in Japan? Uh, it's it's a great legality there. It's it, it was more the case where it's it, the it, there's been a lot of uh, porn, uh, a lot of uh, regulations that have been imposed lately. I want to say within the last five years to tone that down a lot. And yeah. it's. It, I actually visited Japan uh, about six months ago, and yeah, you would you would go to any store, and uh, you would see, you you go like to a Seven Eleven or or Circle <laughs> K or whatever you're gonna call it, and there's an area where there's always comics and stuff, and then there's always the porn area. Okay. And and, and on there you would see a lot of stuff either covered up or kind of like uh, you can only see the title of it, but mm-hmm. uh, most of the stuff there would be like eighteen and over, or you know what. Not here, period. But as for as for uh, pedophilia and all that, they've yeah. been really punching down a lot on on that kind of content. But again, it, it, it's kind of a weird vicious circle there because uh, they're trying to manage, hey, not don't go to the minors to protect minors, take, uh, making sure that if there's uh, a few weirdos out there, make sure we can uh, get them out, the, uh, get them away, or not them affect the, the minors. But on the other side of the coin, it's like, okay, but Japan's uh, birth rate is declining real bad. So it's like, <sighs> no, no minor, no really hardcore pedophilia, but that little gray area, like it's almost legal, barely legal. Yeah. yeah and well, I, if I remember right, they had a problem uh, called Enka in Japan, right? Like schoolgirl prostitution. That's real big, right? Yeah, no. The well, well, you make it sound like he's doing a hard hitting expose. I don't think that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the other thing is, is, uh, and this is only because of uh, I, I have friends who actively go to Japan as well. I've never yeah. been to Japan. I want to go to Japan, but I've had friends who are telling me about this. Is that the the sex industry in Japan is very theme related as well? So. Yeah. You know that that's the other that's the other thing there is like you know like you can go to one um, 
uh, I don't know what they call it. Uh, okay. for, for the sake of argument, I'll call it say, a sex cafe or whatever. Um, like you can go to one and it's uh, themed off of Power Rangers or something like that. You go to another one, it's themed off of cats. You go to another one, it's themed off of schoolgirls. Like there, there's a very theme and entertaining side to it that they try to cater to as well. Yes, there's that. There's that. There's that. And the thing is, they, they manage a, a different culture than we're used to to the uh, at the the rest of the West, where uh, it's like you can go out clubbing with your friends or. If you go out drinking with your work buddies, and then from there take on to the red light district, and then it depends on what uh, what they're in the mood for or what they're economically disposed to. Yeah. There's a little bit of that. Uh, I was uh, being in Japan with a friend of mine. We were in uh, Akihabara, the major uh, anime area, and every two three blocks there was a maid cafe. <laughs> some, there was somebody. Uh, there was a, a girl in the, in the maid uniform uh, passing out the like. Come visit, come visit. <laughs> and that's and what's funny, it's like that's not even part of the like sex industry over there. No, it's oh well, there are and there are areas like, that are <laughs> you're like like you go in the red light district and there is like a random made cafes between one bordello and the other. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, you know, the thing also about maid cafes is a lot of people think that they're very sexualized and whatnot. Well, no, a maid cafe is just you, you go to a cafe and a woman uh, caters to you. That's it. Not sexually. Like, yeah. she'll just serve you drinks, yeah, I serve just... you food, and, and talk to you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think uh, most yes. of the most of Japan, like men, are like uh, porn. It's most, mostly fetish-based, but it's more about, like, the idea and not the actual act of doing something around that fetish. I think that's, uh, I don't know, I get this impression because otherwise I really can't explain why uh, Japanese women uh, go crazy more about a gorilla than their own man. That's to be fair, of... that gorilla did have a lot of junk in the trunk. Well, it bust your bubble, but actually gorillas are some of the worst endowed primates on Earth. Yeah. But, uh, but I think uh, I think there the gorilla thing <laughs> that goes back to the I want to say and uh, call me out if I'm wrong a little <laughs> bit of the old school men are supposed to be manly it, and yeah most, I, most I, of the Japanese men like Japanese men are supposed to be big husky manly no, samurai I'm... types and uh, back in the day they weren't pretty boys <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, so yes. So just, um, just, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I just wanted to like dial it back a little bit to the maid cafe thing. Yeah. Now, okay. Um, in, I don't know how, how it is in your guys' areas of the world, but do you guys have like cuddle parlors now? Cuddle parters. No. Uh, Cu- cuddle I, parters. I, I read about that and saw a video about that in Japan. Yes, there are cuddle parlors. But not sorry, here in well, the, no, no, sorry. I, I, what the fuck is a cuddle parlor? What the it's hell? where you it's where you go and you pay a woman to cuddle you. Are you fucking shitting me? <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I'm not even kidding you. And 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 you know what? I think it like some of these places I, are popping up in the U.S. too. Yeah. yeah oh my they're, god. They're, they're they're all over they're all over Vancouver Island. Now I live in a small part of Canada that's kind of cut off from the rest of it, and it's all over the place here. And I think it's like personally like like I'm okay with it existing, but I think that it's a it's um. A, a side effect of a culture where men and women aren't talking or communicating with each other the same way they used to. Yeah, that yeah. sounds so lonely. You had to it pay is. people to is. cuddle. I I like I love cuddle. I love hugging. I love this. Yeah. Oh my god. I live. I live now. Here, the the the, the really brutal thing about this is, it, I I can't believe it's so popular here in my city. My city has a population uh, that is about like two to one females to males. Okay. There are twice as many, oh. maybe, maybe not twice, but but there there are a, a vastly higher number of females in my city than there are males, and yet this is a thriving industry, and I can't figure it out. I've got a, a, a theory has just popped into my twisted mind. Um, mm. Over the years, um, we've uh, we see, we've seen a series of things of uh, college rape accusations. A yeah. lot of mm-hmm. men, um, speci- speaking, I can only speak for myself. I'm mm-hmm. lacking in confidence when it comes to approaching women. Now, I mm-hmm. tend to assume women aren't interested in me. That way, when I go home at the end of the night, I'm not disappointed. 
you know, anything, is, <laughs> anything is a pleasant surprise. So if you assume women aren't interested, you, you tend to withdraw um, because how do I know my advances are going to be, ex- you know, appreciated? Accepted. How do yeah, you know they're not going to throw their drink in your face? Well, not, you yeah. know, some, sometimes you think, well, you, you know, you're not a big manly man and you don't look like you've got vast amount of disposable income. Go away. I'm not interested. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, which, um, I was actually reading, an, I'm going to look for the article. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I was actually reading an article about how, because how, um, <clears> when it comes <throat> to this whole college rape thing and people are talking about it. Um, the biggest thing about that has been people are saying, well, this is people who are doing random one-night stands with random people. But then I read a pretty interesting uh, article, and I, I, I will look for it, and I'll, I'll, post, for, I'll post for it, that um, people are, are having less and less random sex and having more sex with their friends. Yeah. And mm. this is more so like happening in like the college-level college uh, kind of thing. And if that's the case... Um, like that? that, this would probably change the statistic that we've been hearing about, like you know, college rape is on the rise and whatnot. Which you know, that's neither here nor there. It's been one of those like things. But like you know, the sex culture has been changing oh, for years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Kind of the um, that kind of worries me a little. I mean, <clears throat> uh, okay. Well, I don't know. It sounds like uh, okay. I don't mean about one night stands, but if you do things with friends that implies that there are no romantic feelings friends right it's all like, depend. yeah depending depending i mean it can turn but with friends they stay friends uh how are you going to get experience actually trying uh you know with st- because those are friends it's very difficult to go from friends to something else so if you get uh like adjusted to just getting uh uh, sex and stuff with friends. How are you going to get the experience needed to get a girlfriend? Exactly. That, that... And and well, yeah, and we're seeing the and we're seeing the effects of that in uh, like I, once again, European culture. I think is a little bit different. I've had friends that have gone to Europe and said yeah. that the sex culture there is completely different and yeah. much much better than it is here. <laughs> well, the um, be- depends. We we have, we have plenty of uh, okay. Go go on. It's it's a yeah, long yeah. story. Um, <laughs> but um, what uh, but but what we see here is is like we're. Um, like I see, I know people from all over the world. I know people yeah. from Argentina. I know people from Paris. I know all this kind of stuff. And when I talk to them about this, um, they say that everybody here, in, like in my area of the world, at least, I like like. And this is just Vancouver Island, so I like like uh, Western Canada. Yeah. Um, it's everybody's built up these walls around them. You know, mm. and it's. Uh, I'm sorry, we're getting really off topic here. I've just noticed. Yeah, but uh, okay, let's uh, let's just. Uh, you can finish the story, then we can get back yeah, to yeah. the topic. P- people build up up these walls. Like gone are the matchmakers. Like uh, my friend from uh, Argentina. It's actually my my uh, best friend's wife. Um, mm-hmm. She says uh, that you know where she comes from, matchmakers are, are a thing. Like you make matches. That w- that was your thing. Like you have a, fr- a a friend who's single. You try to get them not single. That was uh, that's a thing in their culture that they do up here. It it doesn't work like that, you know. You have a friend who's single, and uh, you 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 let them with it on their own. You know, the, the, gone is that sense of you know community and relationships. So, anyways, sorry, I, that was just a little uh, no, tangent okay. I wanted to add in there. That's okay. Let's go back to the team at hand. That, that was a really interesting subject. Like we had it going, so that's why I let yeah. it go on. But okay, uh, I want to talk like. The next segment, we we heard like about uh, a lot of talk about uh, you know the sex, the like the the rape culture because it's going uh, it's going uh, like okay a lot of the discussion, but we recently hit like the next step in uh, in bullshit when okay. we had that UN UN hearing <laughs> oh, yes. about cyber violence. Now, personally, I think cyber violence uh, <clears throat> is actually a thing because uh, we 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 had like a, a sixteen years old girl almost killing herself because of of, 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 her, of verbal violence. A lot of mm-hmm. people, a lot of people forget that you can actually do a thing called verbal violence. 
it depends on what the victim like the victim is the person the personality but also the words you use you can actually hurt people using just words so what i what i agree that cyber violence is a thing what i disagree is that most there are a lot of people now saying that cyber violence is disagreeing with women in particular um that's can I, can I chime in if possible sorry yeah could I, could I, could I, could I go in if possible with this one? Or? Uh, yeah. Right, so <clears throat> now, I, I'm a firm believer by, by adding a suffix to a word, it doesn't make it a word. Yeah, this is, this is a, only a fairly recent term. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't believe it's a word just yet, but I, I believe we already have a term for cyber violence and it's called cyber bullying. Um, now, because to me, the term violence mm-hmm implies that you are inflicting physical harm on somebody. Now, verbal violence is something that is also still debated on because at that point, it's convincing someone to do something and and that, could, that can have ill effect and whatnot. But when it comes to something like cyber violence, <clears throat> we already have a term for it. It's called cyberbullying. I believe cyberbullying is an actual thing because, you know, we have seen it happen. There's actual proof about it. But the thing is, is that what I'm concerned about is when people are using a newly defined word to attach other things to it that are not true. See, the thing that I'm concerned about is if I do a video criticizing somebody, and even if I don't call them names, even if I don't, you know, dox them or or any any of these vile things that we could do, just me saying I disagree is now considered violence. That's what worries me. And that to me is just criticism. Now we have we, now, like you know, th- then then comes the the thing of you know, what about people who uh, send threatening messages? That's considered. I I still consider that cyberbullying because you know, when we have people who send out a, um, let's say if I send you a threatening letter in the mail, yeah, yeah, that's that, another that's point a little that bit different come to. Than, than sending it via email because if I'm sending it to you via mail, that means that I know exactly where you live. And there's a good chance that if someone sends you a physical threat like that and a physical manifestation via email, uh, via actual snail mail, there is a good chance I'm in the same area you are in. You know, there's because like most of the time when people do these things, they actually go to their mailbox and put it in. If they put it in the post or if they put it in the mail, that that's stupid because I can always, you know, re- return the sender and whatnot. But when it comes to something like email and whatnot, there's a good chance a person sending that threat is not in the same state or country you're in most of the time. When we look at what happened with Anita Sarkeesian at that college, um, she was about to speak at a college and she got a online th- she got a, a threat emailed to her, mm-hmm. and I think it was also sent to the school. Now she did what a rational person should do, which is you talk to law enforcement and let them know what's going on. And law mm-hmm. enforcement did conduct an investigation. They found, and, and they found no threat, I remember they that. They found there was no threat. And that that was it. That was the end of it. But no, you know, she she still canceled the talk and, and you know, all these other things happened afterwards. But Yeah. You know, like like I was like I like I was uh, pretty much saying earlier, you know, um we already have a term for cyber violence and I call it cyberbullying. And I think there's a definite difference. Okay. Mm-hmm. What about you, EJ? What are your thoughts on this? Well, um, I agree uh, with Aaron, actually. Uh, I agree largely with Aaron. Uh, the addendum that I would add to that, though, is um, that when you're sitting there and, you know, in, like, for instance, you know, in the context that it was presented was Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn at the UN saying basically that uh, people criticizing them was a form of cyber violence, right? And yeah, some of the some of the stuff they received was absolutely horrid. Like I've read some of the stuff. And, like I agree, absolutely. That stuff should like that stuff should be held people who say that kind of stuff should be held accountable for it. However, okay, they're using it as a blanket term to to even like like legitimate criticism. And I have all the criticism in the world for Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn. I don't agree that people should be sending them threats or, 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 or you know, uh, rate threats or anything like that, right? Um, but there's a difference between saying, hey, I think you're a dumb bitch and saying, hey, I think um, that you should be raped and murdered. <laughs> you know, there's a yeah. huge difference between that. There's a huge difference. But no, they right? they put dumb it on bitch. equal terms. They put it on equal yep. terms. No shades of gray, only black and white. Yeah, well, that's that's just it. Like calling her a dumb bitch, you know, that's that's definitely rude, right? 
I will agree with that. Absolutely, it's rude, right? Like, uh, when, like when, for instance, when I offer my criticism of uh, feminist frequency, I do it from a very logical, rational. I don't, you know, I don't really swear unless it's in con, uh, like held within the context, um, and uh, I don't go around, you know, calling her names or anything like that. I just say here, you know, I think she's wrong. This is why, right? Yeah. But what she's saying is is that the cyber violence that she's getting just because of this, you know, whatever it is, point six percent of <laughs> the <laughs> cyber violence she's receiving it justifies being able to do something about a hundred percent of the criticism that she's receiving. Yeah. Right. And, and that that concerns me. That disturbs me greatly. Yeah, well, mostly because there are a lot of people like uh, giving her uh, like going with her. Now I think uh... Uh, uh, Ra, uh, in the UK, how would something like this be uh, handled? Like, uh, has there ever been a case of someone going... The, I think I heard about, like, uh, was it a lawyer in the UK? They tried uh, to, like... Uh, they, br- they brought someone to court over, like, a compliment on LinkedIn? Yeah. Uh, Charlotte Proudman, I believe her name was. Uh, she... Uh, somebody, well, LinkedIn, uh, for all its issues about um, you know, not letting you leave, um, is supposed to be a professional thing. And complimenting someone on their appearance on a professional working network does seem you know, that it was a mistake. It's not something that I would have done. Or you know, if someone said, oh, I think I'll go say she looks lovely. It's like, no, be professional. Don't. Save that for Facebook. Now, that's where you do your cyber lecturing. Um, mm-hmm. And and she's of, and then she complained that her in, she complained that her uh, her career was was ruined. I think uh, I, I can't I can't remember the details. But, uh, Air career. Yeah, because yeah, no, well, so no one's going to um, uh, hire her because she they decided well, she's a pain in the ass, quite frankly. And as for the cyber bullying thing, there is. Um, a mil- thing for sending someone a, a criminal offence of sending mal- malicious communications uh, and there was someone who got um, arrested for trolling herself uh, she, uh, uh, really? Uh, yeah it, it's, oh, it was a weird thing I think I'm, I think that, I think yeah, so, yeah, I think, yeah you're trying to get sorry. a sock puppet going around just trying to troll her to get sympathy or something Mm, where have I same. heard that? I, I think we met a few people like that to ourselves, <laughs> didn't we? I think it's pretty widespread, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, hear yeah. stories, well, I, I hear stories like this all the time. So, well, if, if you know, I sometimes frequent Tumblr in action, though I have to cut it down because some of the nonsense I see there just <laughs> makes me lose the will to live, quite frankly. And you see some of the comments that someone's posted under a non, you think. A non is either a sock puppet, because they're saying something that the person really agrees with, a troll, because a non and trolling go together like bread and butter, or, uh, yeah, you think, well, are they trying to do this to, to prove a point? Uh, you know, you say, sock puppet, yes, I'm great, I'm wonderful, keep going. What they're doing is, a, 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 I'm pretending to be a troll to make you look good, or is it a genuine troll? I mean... It's hard to know with these things. It's uh, it's especially when it's you know the anonymity of the internet, which is a great thing we must keep. The, the uh, being able to say something without fear of repercussion for being tracked down for saying it. What's the saying? Um, give a mm-hmm. man a mask; he'll tell you all the truths you want to hear. But of course, the downside of that is sometimes what he'll tell you is complete cobblers because there's no repercussions for it. Again, yeah, and- it's. Yeah, where, where do you draw the line on this? It's it's complicated. Yeah, and I want to hear a little bit from Eagle on this. Uh, I, I want to add, like, put in, in there, starting from you, Eagle. There, there is the thing, like, uh, for uh, things like libel and threats and stuff like that in the in the real world, there are, like, penances. Like, uh, you get away. If you do something like that, even, uh, like, stalking someone in real life and <coughs> threatening them, you get... Uh, you get like uh, some of your liberties taken away. You get like a restraining order. You're not allowed to. You move city. You had to go somewhere else. Why? Why don't they do the same for things on the internet? Why do you think that is? Um, 
the way I see it, and uh, I'm talking on this actually being a telecom engineer by trade, is uh, first starting with uh, the word cyber violence. I see it as a misnomer, as uh, both Aaron and EJ said. It's a misnomer because uh, the only true cyber violence in this uh, that it, it could be recognized as proper quote unquote violence, it would be like a, a, a like stealing your your information from your website, uh, getting your getting your credit cards, getting your social information, getting any information to actually track you down physically and actually commit physical violence or commit some kind of violence, something that actually damages you or another person directly. Uh, in a, in, a, in a technical sense, I feel that uh, well, it's a misnomer. It's it's harder to actually track down somebody that's uh, going under going under the web un- anonymity, just being uh, a, as a, a possible sock puppet, uh, uh, just an invented account, or something like uh, the usual trolling on Reddit, on 4chan, or any other website. How much of it is really somebody just uh, getting their jollies because uh, it's 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 funnier to troll somebody versus this is somebody that actually needs to be addressed and needs to possibly have something high, escalated yeah. either uh, <clears throat> with the police or or something legally put in. It's it's a gray area that it, it has begun to be begun addressed, but. On both sides, it might it either becomes very heavy-handed and it affects way too many people, or it just it, it, it's just a drop in the bucket and it's just not enough. So, I, uh, so you think that's why there are still no like uh, set laws ag- against these kind of uh, things? It it would depend a lot of it uh, on uh, how much is documented, how much is, uh, can actually be defined as proper uh, as the gray area between bullying and proper violence, and how much of that bullying is actually be- become to be- become to begin being uh, liable uh, th- uh, proper uh, threats. Again, mm. it's it's shades of gray that we still have not been able or that had not been defined properly legally to actually work upon. Yeah, that's surely a... cyber violence is a DDoS attack. Exactly. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, you you're being violent towards my website servers. You <laughs> bastards. <laughs> yeah, it, even yeah, worse. Like, if you're... Sure, surely yeah. that is cyber violence. Yeah, I, I, well, especially if like your my... website is a it's cute mascot. Uh, okay, uh, now I, I want to do this, uh, still on cyber violence. I want to ask, uh, what do you think? Ra- there is a lot of talk going around, uh, like around the world, about the subject that, like the the um, the right of the internet. Like there are people actually ty- trying to put in uh, in the constitution and stuff like that the right to use the internet like it's it, it, they want to be, they want it to become a basic human right so but so with that in mind there are a lot of people like uh, when the city go like no cyber violence is not real uh, because you can just turn off get off the internet get off facebook and stuff now, if that becomes like a basic human right, accessing the internet, wouldn't that statement be a little bit, uh, you know, problematic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, 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 that lovely word, problematic. Um, well, what, what do we consider to be the basic human rights? The internet is, no, the UN's... Charter on Human Rights with its 50-odd clauses that my sister has a copy of. Yeah. Nowhere does it state in the free uh, you know, access to somebody's Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, the, the, should, the internet has given us our, our an ability to express our opinions, our feelings. And that's great. Because, you know, how do we know what, what we're doing? Yeah, you know, if we can't express ourselves, then the you know, humans die inside. You know, we all need this um, expression, whether it's via um, a creative outlet like writing or painting a picture or something. We we all need to get something out. We need to express ourselves. 
if you don't, then you know, it's as I say, you die inside. And it's okay to start, but would we have been saying the same thing, um, you know, 150 years ago about the printing press? You know. Uh, you know, or, or you know, the telephone, or, or, or no, yeah, it, 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 is is the tele is tele telecommu- is the telephone a human right? Is the um the, the access to the weather uh, on the TV or radio is that a human right? I I would say no, but then I'm a shipload. So what the fuck do I know about? <laughs> we're we're all privileged here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are. We are privileged with a very large dose of common sense, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, I wouldn't go that far. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I said a very large dose. I didn't say we have all, com- <laughs> all common sense. Oh, so, <clears throat> what, I find it, what I find most interesting about this is, is yeah. uh, you've, got the, you've got the CEO of Nestle coming out saying how water... Access to water is not a basic human right, but then oh, now, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but and the that, internet. Yeah, sorry totally. for for, uh, for jumping in on there, but I'm next to California. We need Ooh. water. Yeah. <laughs> Five year long drought, right? Yeah. Well, hold Five? on a second. Hey, hold <laughs> on. It wasn't isn't like Captain Kirk supposed to make like a, a water gun in, like uh, Portland or something? Huh? Like you know. So- like, you, you're getting in a bit choppy. Yeah, you're getting you get in a bit choppy. Okay, now it's cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, it's um, you know, you're, you're talking about like you know, driving in California. I, I remember reading that uh, William Shatner was going to build a, a water pipeline to you guys from like Seattle or something because they have too much water. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah well, At that point, I think are... government. <laughs> Their water is um, uh, well, like yeah, they got a lot of water in their in their local watershed here. But like a lot of because uh, I live in British Columbia, Canada, and a lot of our water was actually sold to Nestle <laughs> for, oh, for, uh, oh, for for, for literally for literally like five dollars for a few billion gallons. You got to be shit, and I'm man. Not, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. I, I don't know the exact amount, but that it's it is in that ballpark. And don't you guys just... know that the next World it's War is going really to be special. about the water? Especially. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially especially in uh, in China. I uh, I, t- I tell you what the next uh, the next World War is going to start in China because those guys got a little taste of power over the world and now they won't relent it. They're getting old real fast. Their whole area is getting deserted because of climate change, and they won't be able to stand for that. That's the, that's the reason why they won't let go Tibet and stuff like that. Because most of their water is there. Mm-hmm. Most of the water uh, is there. Yeah, uh, there's uh, there are issues with a number of China's thing. You know how. Uh, the, the sky was so polluted that in order yeah. to show people the sun looked like they they broadcast pictures of the sun on like uh, electronic billboards. Yeah, this, I this saw is that. What the sun looks like. Yeah, uh, or, or as I once joked on it on Mock the Week, to show you how polluted it is, the javelin has gotten stuck in the sky. The tension's so thick you can cut it with a knife, literally. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I mean, I don't. Uh, I yeah, don't really... access to clean water is a human right. Well, access to sanitation in general. So it's yeah. water to clean yourselves and flush your toilets and what have you. That is a human right. Yeah. Access to Facebook, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then again, I've seen a lot. Yeah. We've all seen a lot of bullshit on Facebook. But Facebook is it does enable people to contact each other when they're far apart. When normal communication lines are inconvenient, um, if you've got friends and family in different time zones, for example, it says, "Oh, I did mean to give you a call, but you know, you're half you're half a world away, and you know, it's going to cost me a boatload of cash." But a few mm-hmm. cheeky messages, oh, let me know you're okay. Well, the, 
Well, the thing is, um, let me play devil's advocate there, because uh, you say a few messages on Facebook, but the internet is kind of a little more than that. It is not like oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a basic right to, to Facebook, but a basic right to the internet. So, because the internet changed how the world works, uh, like the, wor- the world world now hinges on the internet. There are people like, uh, in the future, we'll be able to have like uh, doctors doing operations in other countries uh, through the internet. So, if uh, you, if because of certain people, you become so scared that you like, you can't open your your damn computer because we're going to be flooded with hate mail or stuff like that. Isn't that like uh, a bit? Uh, too much yes um oh, yeah you, you've got to be able to do your own thing without fear of persecution attack or you know, general fear for your safety I, I think i think that's a safe thing to say you should be able to go about your business with uh, you know all things you know with a with reasonable expectation of safety i mean we're not talking about go walking around um Oh, yeah. yeah, hate it in a skimpy top and wondering why you're getting lecherous looks because hate is quite dangerous. And uh, yeah, the place in Papua New Guinea, I think it, I'm not sure if it's the place is Port Stanley, but the, the, the capital city of Papua New Guinea is quite possibly one of the worst cities to live in in the whole planet. It, it regularly you know, the worst capital city ever, basically. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> Currently, the worst capital city. Yeah, you know, it's quite, um, quite horrific. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Uh, what about uh, you, other guys? What do you think about this? Hello. Hmm. Hello. I'm 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 here. I'm just I'm just trying to think of a. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to think of a pro- an appropriate um, kind of response for that. So just just give me a second. Somebody else okay. can go ahead. What was, what was the question again? Because you kind of broke. Yeah, up. no, red. Right, we're on the, the like worst captain in the world. I can all that. No, the thing is, uh, they're thinking like uh, about making the right uh, to access on the internet uh, a you hum- basic human right. So in that optic, uh, what would like cyberbullying we be consider well, like? I mean, here's the thing, though. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a human right because, you know, I mean, we're we're at a point, though, where we need the internet for basic means of communication and and, and networking. But I think it should be readily available at a lower rate, uh, even uh, in a government sense, free. But I don't think it's a basic human right. Well, the thing is, now we're. Um, I studied this stuff uh, for my. Uh, I said right now we're we're moving into the like. Uh, y- you probably heard the, like uh, the 3.0 version of the web. That it's gonna be called the Internet of Things, like uh, the stuff we see in, uh, in movies like Minority Report, all the sci-fi stuff. There is gonna be is no longer be the same to a computer or a smartphone, but our houses, our cars, our buildings, uh, the office, everything is gonna be connected to the internet all time, all the time. Like it's gonna, you're not going to be able to even uh, function properly in society without the internet in a few years. So, in that optic, you know, there was an episode of The Outer Limits. Do you guys remember that show? Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a more. Uh, it, was, it was aired in the '90s, and it was about this guy who, uh, like, the internet in this era was all connected to through everybody's brains, and this one guy, for some one reason or another, could not connect hmm. um, due to medical reasons. So he was oh. completely disconnected from the rest of the world. From the rest of the world, and he and it was really interesting because how he had to learn is he had to learn through the old fashioned way by learning how to read and write. And uh, what ended up happening during this period is, for one reason or another, the entire internet shut down and nobody could access information anymore. No, nobody had bothered learning anything the old fashioned way, and so they all had to look to this one guy who could, could, not, could not connect to the internet who had to learn. You know, the, like like the old fashioned way, and he's sitting there. Yeah. He's sitting there having to teach the rest of the world how to read and write and all this kind of stuff. And <laughs> I think that our re- over reliance on the on the internet, 
um, uh, could pose a considerable threat to, to, to uh, the way we live if it were either mistreated or brought down or, or whatever because, you know, like yeah, even there... today, if if the internet were to drop drop tonight, for instance, so many people would be at a loss. Oh, yeah. Be yeah. So screwed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Why why did you say that, Teagle? Because, Teagle? like, you know, we, we live in a time we live in a time and age where, I mean, I know we're going to talk about this in a little bit because, um, yeah. um, you, you, we live in a time and an age where you know people can be fans of anything, but yeah. we have access to so much information you know that that wasn't unheard of years ago. I mean, like a good example is anime, for example. Like, not a lot of people are into anime. Anime no. really took off in like the eighties and nineties. But, you know, we've been seeing people be more understanding of anime with the evolution of the Internet. Because yeah, now with, a, with the early Google 2000s. Words and things like that, you know, where people can understand like certain things in that culture and have a better understanding about certain things like that. And it's, it's you know, you know, now we're at a point where like someone could go, oh, man, you know, I, I wish I knew what, what, what I was explaining or something like that. Oh, let's take all my friends and go to the library and find out. No, I can go on my phone and get that information now. You know, mm-hmm. that's. Yeah. That's that's where you know the internet, the internet, and you know mass networking is good. It's also like a perfect means for you know uh, communications and whatnot. But we are a little bit too self reliant on it. But you know we're at a point where you know it's not a it's not a needed human right, but it's a needed human necessity now. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, what do you think about this eagle? Because with your line of work, uh, you can offer some inner insight, I guess. No, it's it, it's a little bit of both. It's become it's become a necessity because it's become such a useful tool for everybody, and across the board, uh, a lot of different types of jobs uh, they it become online. Uh, the the comment I said like you know what the the internet goes down, the economies are going to start plummeting. So much stuff is goes through the backbone of the internet just to just uh j- just as a quick uh breather that's like. Uh, a lot of the New York Stock Exchange, the Nikkei, the Europe Stock Exchange. How do you think they do those trades? They uh, being from one one end of the country to another, or one country to another, you have to go through the internet. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of a lot of economical power is held through the internet. A lot of uh, virtual money going around, and I'm not and I'm not just talking about uh, bitcoins or doge coins, but real dollars, yens, and, and euros. Yeah. On the side of um, of a necessity, it's become a necessity, but not a not proper a proper human necessity like food, shelter, and health. It's again, it's a, it's a great tool. It's it's brought us a good level of enlightenment in the last fifteen, twenty, thirty years with uh, uh, making it a lot easier to get, uh, get from point A, our info from point A to point B, and uh, mm-hmm. taking a lot of those people from point A to point B literally through, instead of having a physical map of dro- downloading just Google Maps or a GPS. But we're mm-hmm. not at the point where that we're so connected that we depend on internet. There's still countries out there still, if they run the internet, they still run it at, uh, at they don't have broadband, they still have the old school. Well, if, if, if in the internet is a human right, then that court in Canada denying that guy who disagreed with the feminists have violated his human rights, you should sue them and the government. Yeah, I mean, they, it's not yet a moral. in your face, social justice! <laughs> <laughs> okay, the thing is, uh, um, okay, uh, I'm going to add uh, another guest in five minutes. Uh, I just wanted to say, the thing is, uh, I realize... Uh, also from the kind of job I do, I mean, job not yet, but I study, like PR and marketing, I realized that uh, uh, just knowing or being able to access the internet nowadays gives you power over others that cannot. So in mm-hmm. that, uh, in that uh, like, point, of, in that view, at least I mean, I think, yeah, that uh, people should have the right and should be able to get access to the internet, especially those in poor countries, developing countries, especially in this time and day, because having access to the internet gives you, uh, puts you on equal ground, on equal ground with, uh, with, with the rest of the world. Because unless you're in people in places like China, where it's civilly censored, and even there, 
being able to have access to the internet puts you on equal footing, at least to the amount of information you get, get access to with the rest of the world. Yeah, I, I, I would go along with that. It's um, not, not, not quite a um, nuclear weapon sort of thing, but if, you, if, your, if your country doesn't have good internet access, you, know, you can't tap into it's the back not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that... yeah, yeah, you are at a disadvantage. I mean, Melanus can't download Port half as quickly as I can. I mean, you know, that's where it all comes down to. With the internet files... Those who have uh, found that access to pornography can find themselves very popular. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the li- my library of porn catching Larry Flint will be laughing all the way back to the bank. <laughs> I I think that although I personally don't think that it should be a human right, I think it is definitely a humanitarian um, uh, goal that we should definitely look towards uh, is is connecting the entire world, getting everybody talking to one another. Yeah. Right. It's just that as long as, you know, they're sitting there having arguments over whether or not water is a basic human right, which is it's a no brainer to me. Of course it is. Yeah, of course. It that is. that Internet that talking about Internet being a human right, like like, OK, let's put that on the back burner until we get this water thing sorted, <laughs> yeah, sorted out. You know? I mean, yeah, I like, like, but you, you go. How did you even get to this point? Who's the motherfucker who says the water isn't a basic human right? That guy. at the <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm I'm gonna... I didn't talk about that at the UN. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why. It's because big business is involved. It's because and... big business okay. is involved, yeah. I'm going to add, uh, add on another guest. This is Rekov from uh, Twitter. Okay, let's... Ooh, yeah. Rek. And there we go. Okay. He's got a manly beard, at least. Okay. Hello. Hello? Hello. Hey. hey there. Hello. Hello. Hi. Those are, hi. Those are some. Thanks lovely... for having me on. Yeah. Th- thank oh, you no for problem. being on. Those oh, are privilege. some lovely rapids behind you. Where are you from, guy? I'm. Uh, I'm from Portland, Oregon, in the United States. So it sounds like I'm just a little bit south of, of whoever said they're from Vancouver. Vancouver Island. That would be me. Yeah. You're not too oh, far is... away. <laughs> yeah. No. Not too. I mean, we we actually have a closer Vancouver. There's a there's a Vancouver in Washington as well, but it's not yeah. nearly as nice as yours. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, you also have a Naples in the USA, but it's not as nice as ours. But I guess he has less crime. Yeah, we have <laughs> everything in the USA. I talk about that. Uh, yeah, we have a Naples here in Florida. Uh, it's filled with old people. <laughs> <laughs> you can visit Rome somewhere too, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, you can you can visit the whole world without leaving the USA. We have a Lebanon, we have a Paris, we have a Miami <laughs> that's in Ohio. I think it's easier for most people just go to Epcot. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, what where the... you where Sorry, you go ahead. Yeah, so I was just wondering if you were listening in on what we were talking about if Absolutely. you have if you have anything to add to it. Yeah, I mean I've actually um just cut out of working in the telecommunications industry and the power industry and it seems like electricity would be a very similar thing to compare the internet to um the way electricity companies work in the states at least is you don't necessarily have a right to them but because it's considered so essential to people's lives there are very strict procedures for when a company disconnects someone from electricity so a company can't just decide to cut you off they have to give you you know, plenty of chances and plenty of warning. So maybe something along those lines. So you like for, a... for internet as well. So it's yeah, because if you make internet a human right, you're suddenly making it somebody's responsibility to provide the internet. Unlike with free speech, all you have to do is not the right to free speech. It's about keeping people from restricting your rights. If you give someone the right to the internet, that's forcing someone to provide the internet so it's not exactly the same mm. yeah with free speech you just have to not arrest people for speaking exactly in the newspaper so yeah so yeah so i'm with you on that one that makes good sense I guess. so maybe we should just regulate you know how easy it is for companies to shut people off of the internet and the same way with how we regulate telephone calls we could potentially regulate it so that companies can't control what you say and what you are and aren't allowed to see on the internet. 
Yeah, like uh, you may you you like they seem they loved Comcast uh, and uh, now they made a merger with the other ones. Was it very zone like the they're like they're trying periodically to impose something like that? Uh, is that right? Yeah. Um. What what the cable companies in the states want to do is they want to be able to sell you the internet in the same way that they sell you TV channels. So you could pay fifteen dollars a month to get Facebook and YouTube. You can pay another five dollars a month to get Wikipedia, and and so on and so forth. And I think Interiors, we would all yeah. agree that, that that would be incredibly destructive to people's abilities to communicate freely. Because right. I mean, you know, what if you make a website and the only people who see it are the people who are paying, you know, three hundred dollars a month for the top plan? Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing is, previously and up to up to now, it's it, it used to be more about okay, well, we're gonna give you this much bandwidth, but if you consume so much, you know, like the old cell phone system where you got so many minutes, once you end it up, we'll charge you extra. And you know what? Most people are fine with that, internet wise. Just we want to get it standardized to a good speed as a base. Not okay. We guarantee you at at most you can get this. But they never tell you that the average is way lower. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's up to oh, you, you charge. You're telling me I can have up to whatever speed. Well, in that case, I'm going to pay you up to this much. What, what you want? Oh, you don't give me the full speed, then you don't get the full whack. You go, you I don't pay the bill in full. See how they like it. Unfortunately, <laughs> it would not work unless you happen to be fabulously wealthy and or a massive shit stirrer like uh, Donald Trump. He could get away with it, and that would be uh... hilarious. He did. I don't. Th- I don't think he should be president of the United States. No, I, I, I would like to see him take <laughs> on. Um, like, uh, like it's it's incredible. I think uh, let's go on the, on politics for a minute because uh, I think I don't know. Maybe okay. I don't. W- I don't want to go like uh, generalize because maybe someone here is a republic. I don't know, but it seems like uh, even people from out other countries uh, can tell that uh, having Donald Trump as the president of the United States would be a very bad idea. Why is that? Why do you think is that? Um, it's. I think it's difficult to say. I'm. I'm as far from a republican as you can get. But that <laughs> said, I don't know which republican candidate. I like more than Donald Trump. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, like, if, if you look at his, his tax plan, it's the most liberal tax plan of all of the Republican candidates. If you look at his stand on women's rights, on religion, and, and, and all of these things, he's, he's, he's the most liberal for the Republicans. And that basically just uh, shows how scary the Republican Party has gotten. But, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like the, there is a lot of people like uh, focusing uh, focusing on him because uh, I don't know, like uh, instinct on instinct. It's like most people when they hear Donald Trump maybe become the president of the United States, they go like, "Ooh, bad idea." Why is that? I kind of want to say the the thing with Donald Trump, if he becomes a president, he's gonna pretty much become the cartoonish slash movie. Movie? TV star slash uh, personality that became the president, and and all those uh, movies like a uh, Blade Runner, like uh, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, <laughs> it's like you know what we've gotten to the point where art imitates life. Now life imitates art, and we we got a cheesy president in office. Like all those times saying like President Arnold Schwarzenegger or President whatever, yeah. and. And you feel it's like okay if if he's is he really gonna be a, the president or is he just a like a scapegoat just in front of everybody like ooh we got Donald Trump there. Well, remember yeah, that we we've already had an actor as president. I mean Ronald Reagan, <laughs> yeah, had and the, same the qualifications and yeah, we all saw how well that went. <laughs> yeah, centrism. Well, I, I well, just want to see him. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say to be fair to Reagan. Um, the CFC ban, he didn't go, oh no, it's all a huge conspiracy. And he did a lot of work on, I believe he did some work on dismantling the studio system uh, in Hollywood, where like, which was something that needed to be done because they were acting like cartels and generally you know, owning somebody. He said, right, you now do these hour of pictures for you. 
Um, well, he, he, hey, that's that's the thing I think is because he was co- that was his area of expertise. He was he was an actor, so he knew what the system was like. So of course he knew how he, he, that he had to dismantle it, right? Oh yeah. Well, it, the, you know how the um, there was a the, 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 I think it's called the Jackie Coogan law, or it's known as that. Because Jackie Coogan was in uh, something when he was a child. He was a child actor. I think he was um, Sandlot Kids or something like that. I can't, I can't recall. But yeah, he was Uncle Fester in the TV series of The Addams Family. Oh, okay. And, uh, sorry, to he, s- he was, yeah, yeah. sorry to stop there for a minute ago. I just want to say that Aaron has to go. So I just want to say bid him goodbye. So, uh, oh, okay. yes. Oh, okay. Book, sir. Th- Thanks for yeah, being so, on. Sorry, uh, sorry, I had to actually take off, um, but it was great being on the, being on the show. Um, hope to talk to you guys again in the future. Um, you know, I just wanted to do a quick thing because I uh, one thing I wanted to bring up was the uh, uh, what was it the, the last uh, uh, topic uh, yeah. that we were going to talk about localization, uh, localization and bad localizations. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I did a panel on this. Uh, I, I do panels on this at conventions and whatnot, and. Uh, you know, I can give a quick TLDR on this if possible. For okay, you. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so pretty much um, we've been having localization for almost every type of media since, you know, the creation of television when we were bringing in different types of shows from all around the world, specifically in the 50s when we had early anime coming in. We had to localize those shows because, you know, again, like I said earlier, no one had access to the Internet. Not a lot of people knew about the Japanese culture, and it wasn't something you can easily Google or anything like that. You know, they had to localize it so kids couldn't understand these shows because at that point, those shows were kind of marketed to kids. But when we had this big boom of anime in the 80s and 90s, we also had a lot of bootleg shows coming out from Japan. And the only way we can get them was like through a con and on VHS. So you also had subtitles that were coming out and they had to localize them because not everyone knew of the Asian culture. We only recently been having this big push of putting in footnotes in anime and in manga only like as old as like you know maybe like 13 or 14 years ago where mm-hmm. they would add a note in the bottom of the page or on the bottom of the screen explaining what that thing is that they could not that they kept the original translation for so you know we that's been a thing but you have to look at how some markets are wanting to try to expose you know their product to a massive market Personally, I wish we could just keep the shows as they are originally intended to be because you're changing the story, you're editing the story, and you're editing someone else's work. And that's not what they want. You did not write the show. You have no say. Yeah. I, I believe you have no say in that. And I think we need to go with like how a lot of people in the fan sub community have been handling yeah. this, which is they keep the original word and on the bottom of the page tell you what that word is. Or if they make a reference to something of pop culture influence in Japan – they make a little footnote on it, and in some cases, like I've been seeing this on some uh, translated shows, is they will actually have a link in the video that goes to the Wikipedia page of that pop culture reference they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, that doesn't make yes. sense. But with, uh, it's the, not, some, it's so, not sometimes, those... say, sometimes just as Keikaku translates yeah, as Keikaku means clan. <laughs> I actually have to go. I just want to get that out there. But thank you for having me on the yeah, show. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Oh, hope have a good hope time, we can yeah. do. Hope we can do this again. Bye, Aaron. No problem. Have a good one. Thanks, Aaron. Farewell. See ya. Yeah. So bad localization, and uh, let me tell you, I seen uh, some bad localizations in Italy because uh, Italy is like uh, a second home to many Japanese manga way before America ever was. Like uh, you guys. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah, you guys uh, in America, you, go, you don't give a fuck about Fist of the North Star. Or Kuto no Ken. In Italy, in Italy, it's You don't give a fuck. The problem is, it's too bloody and gory. Yeah, it's and too bloody and gory. It's too instead scary. In, it's too scary. Instead, in Italy, or Kuto no Ken is like, it's defined a generation of Italian people. <laughs> like, almost the same way it defined uh, a generation in... Uh, in uh, in Japan, and, uh, and that's good. So I, I, and it's not only that. Also, other um, so we have uh, good manga translators. Like our translators and editors for manga are awesome. Like uh, I learned a lot of about Japanese culture by reading great teacher on Izuka, because all the there are. They oh, were yeah. full of footnotes and translations, so I learned what Otoro was and Sashi, uh, or Sushi, Okonokomiyaki, and so on. But that making me hungry. Yeah, well, sorry. That, <laughs> sorry about that. Well, one thing is... to point out. Yeah. Well, 
Um, right, go. You don't necessarily even need to put the footnotes because, I mean, that is how children learn in general. They hear a word they don't know, even if it's a word in their own language, and they learn what the meaning is through context. Yeah. So if also you watch the... enough anime, you'll learn what these words yeah, mean by... anyways. It's... Yeah, but it's... it was not only about words. It was also about things like... Uh... There was a scene where, uh, the, basically, they, there was a scene where he and uh, Urumi, one of his students, like, get uh, in trouble because uh, Urumi drops a, a bottle on top of a guy who passes out on the ground. And uh, Onitsuka, uh, like, goes blank when he sees it because he sees his clothes and he has, like, certain types of shoes, certain types of clothes and a pin, Without a footnote, we would, I would never guess that that, because, that was because that's our Yakuza dresses. Well, I would have said somebody in the politician area, but... Yeah, that, that, you see what I mean? So, uh, so, it's cool. Anime, not so much, because translate, we have some of the best dub voice actors ever. Like, uh, we actually made uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone sound cool, instead of a bambling, you know, <laughs> you know how Sylvester Stallone... But the translation bad. Oh, but the you know, like, oh, we, horrible his uh, accent is a uh, lot. Yeah. In Italy, <laughs> he sounds a lot cooler. But the thing is, uh, so is so... you don't like hockey? <laughs> 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 but the thing is, then I saw some of the stuff Americans did, like uh, the, <laughs> the what they did to Battle Royale, the manga. I swear to God, the manga of Battle Royale is the best version of that story ever. But the things you did to that story, you turned it into like a reality show. <laughs> that was like the closest thing to a scene I ever seen for a manga. Oh my fucking God. Why do Americans do so bad, such bad localizations? What's your problem? Why do I you think it is. The studios think that their audiences are stupid. I mean, you see it yep. with a lot of localizations out of... Um, I follow Swedish culture fairly closely, and you see yeah. things like, even in the UK, I think the BBC did uh, Ekta Menichor, and they called it Humans, and they, the oh, Americans yeah. did Bridge, and they called it Bron. Uh, the Americans yeah. don't just... I mean, they they create an American version of the show, and it's generally less clever and more obvious for their "quote unquote" simple-minded audience. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Chuck, I got to disappear look... for two minutes. Very sorry, but I'll be right back. Honest. All right. If if you look back, uh, do you guys remember Final Final Fantasy IV when it was originally released? Uh, as Final You're Fantasy II, right? They made, yeah, they released it as two, but there were two, there were actually two versions of Final Fantasy IV that were made. There was easy type and hard type, right? And really? um, the hard, yeah, and what, and, and the hard type basically it had some extra features and it had all that kind of stuff. And they refused to release it in North America because they thought that it was just a little too much for American audiences. Oh, and it's just like now, now I'm Canadian, so but 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 like our culture here in Canada is practically American as it stands, <laughs> right? We yeah. watch the same shows, we have the same interests, we like the same video games. It's it, it's just how that works, you know. We get the same localizations. Yeah, you're as, there. Uh, so yeah, as yeah, but um, you know, and then and it's the same reason why they wouldn't release Final Fantasy V here because they were like, oh, you know, no, it's too it's too much for American audiences to handle. They, they would the job system it. really. The door yeah, the was too system. much. I had to. I had to. <laughs> this is way back in the day. I had to pirate the bloody thing in order to play it. I had to get a ROM, like uh, an uh, emulator, in order to play it. And there was this really great um, translation project. It was a fan translation project. Did a wonderful job. Translated the whole game, and I played it right through on my computer. Yep. Right. And, you know, and that caught, and obviously, you know, that's going to cost the company money. Like, bad localizations, it, it, it costs the company money. Um, now, I used to do uh, manga scanlation kind of thing uh, w way back in the day. Yeah. Right? This is back, uh, back in uh, 1999, 2000 kind of area. I okay. was part of the Ronma, Ronma One Half uh, manga translation project. Wow. Yeah. That's some vintage stuff right there. 
vintage stuff vintage stuff and this is because this is before viz entertainment had managed to actually complete the whole thing right Ugh. so i so i did some yeah i did some uh i probably i think i did something like 27 different chapters of uh run my one half it was a huge team of us we were all working on it right we oh, didn't make any cool. money off of it it was it was actually pretty cool um but uh like even the viz translation wasn't so bad but like I even preferred the ones that we did because we did just that. We did the whole, uh, you know, the footnotes and the whole, like, you know, when they're you making translated it. To... You didn't localize exactly. it exactly, exactly, exactly. We may have paraphrased a few things here and there just to fit it in the speech bubble without making it look silly. Yeah, right. But uh, because you also got to look at the grammar structure in Japanese is very different from English or other European languages, yeah. right? Um, so, uh, you, so you, you kind of have to go through that, uh, from time to time, but like, I, like I have seen some horrendously bad ones. I don't even look at dubs and dubbed anime. I, I, no, 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 yeah, I, no. Any, foreign, any foreign, yeah, any foreign yeah. film for that matter. Yeah. I will watch the subtitles. Yeah. Version. Me too. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you were saying Eagle? Eagle, you were saying? Yeah, for example, it's I want to say uh, with uh, dubs, I go situationally. There's been some good groups uh, that, uh, or some some good producers that have done good jobs. That actually understand and actually are fans of the uh, of the the medium. Mm-hmm. Yes, like uh, like more recently, like Dragon Ball Z has been done. Uh, when uh, Cowboy Bebop came out, that was just completely blew it out of the water. Old school Tenchi Muyo videos, they were actually those were actually pretty fun with a dub. But like I said, it's it's more about understanding the content and the context of the of the of the series. Uh, being from uh, from the Mexican uh, Mexican border town again, like uh, like you, EJ. Part of my culture is it's either mixed, full me- part Mexican, part um, American. I, my English I learned watching PBS, watching Sesame Street, watching TV. I grew up on Transformers. I grew up on Robotech, which, uh, correction, Macross. Macross, I grew up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I grew up watching the old school Super Robot series. I got Messenger Z. I got Transor Z. All the oh. old school stuff. Jig. Jig. And, and uh, when video games, came, uh, video games came out, localizations were like, if, if, it was a, if it was a sports game, well, yeah, there's not much to confuse on that one. If anything, we would get a a, a a rebranded game like the the Kunio Kun series, which in America was the River City Ransom games. Which oh yeah, was yeah, yeah. A solid. Uh, uh, it was a solid localization, but it was a, a complete different adaptation from being pretty much the uh, the sequel or precursor to well the sequel to Renegade. Yeah. With the Kunio Kun series, you're like, okay, so how does that connect? And uh, a lot of us we missed out on a lot of other stuff. With the Kunio Kun series, we only got River, uh, River City Ransom, uh, Ness Soccer, and what was uh, Super Dodgeball? That's the only yeah. thing we got from Kunio Kun. Yeah, I'd, ar- I'd argue that, and that, uh, that was going to be my next point because I'd argue that even when they're doing well, localization can still hurt a series and a customer. Like the most, the most recent example. Uh, do you guys uh, ever have you guys ever played the Ace Attorney series? Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright. You know? Uh, Phoenix Wright, no, Ace Attorney. No. Yeah. Yeah, Ace Attorney. Okay. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't. No, okay. I love that series. And the problem is, uh, uh, when they localized it, uh, they, they did a good job. I have to, to, to admit, I played it in Italian, I played it in American, and it's it, I compared it and it's good. It's a good localization. They managed to keep the wit and the humor and uh, the energy. It's very good. But the problem is, when they localized it, they didn't make it uh, take place in Japan anymore. They had to make it take place. They made it take place in California. And now, a new, a new game came out. It's called The Great... A Saturny, and it features uh, an uh, an uh, an ancestor of things right in the 800s, and he moves from Japan and goes to London, meets uh, Sherlock Holmes. But the problem is that game is never going to see the West because while the others they could get away with uh, putting it in California, this one is so thick into Japan that there's no way they can do that. They can't make it fit with the uh, the things they already localized, so that game is never going to be translated. 
Yeah. 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 I think the, the Japanese legal system very different to the US one. Speaking of, so jumping in on um, uh, localizations, I glanced like because they didn't have all the the English versions of Ranma out. I and I did read and speak some French. Um, I look at some of the uh, where they lined up for and um, in the the French versions of the manga, and in that they localized mm. it. So, so Nabiki was, was saying, "Oh yes, it'll be however many francs." It's like that makes no sense whatsoever. Well, actually, it kind of <laughs> does. But uh, like, why are they using francs when they're in Tokyo? What kind of <laughs> yeah. monster does this? <laughs> so you know, so it's not just. You, uh, English speaking uh, in countries that do this, uh, yeah. Publishers that have that issue. So, so in the interest of fairness, uh, I yeah. thought I'd add that. Yeah, uh, you were saying Reco, you were saying something. Reco? Hello. Hello. He's not. He's not. Oh, no, he's sorry. Not. No. Um, oh, there he is. I, mean, okay. I, I think. I mean. The motivation for localization is is probably pretty clear, and and the reason that these companies are doing it is because they can get more money off of the mass market than from the the niche customers who actually appreciate the original culture. And I'm curious if you guys think there's any way to, to I guess, convince companies that they can make more money by being true to the original content. Well, well that that's been happening slowly but surely. Yeah. Uh, with with Kickstarters, how many? Uh, and going back into the video game slash anime area, yeah. Uh, uh, how many series? How many games or uh, have been brought in only with like almost an, an almost machine translation, and then somebody uh, uh, the company says, "Hey, there's fans that actually want this." There's a Kickstarter going on right now for uh, a, Move uh, Love a for Move Love for translating Move Love. Uh, Move Love, yeah. Yeah, Mob and, Love uh, and, and Fruto Grisaia. And now for Little Busters. Little Busters is getting an official translation. I think because yep. of that. But again, but, but, but like I said, it starts as a niche market. And they translate it for, for a broader market, for more kids that don't know Japanese, that don't care about learning Japanese. They only, they only see cool characters on screen or fun characters on screen. Hey, Pokemon, come on. When everybody yeah. goes like, "Hey, I got some donuts," and it's onigiri, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, kids yeah. don't know what onigiri is like, so they're like, oh, "Okay, so what's the white donut?" <laughs> but yeah, it's like the whole uh, with Ronma one half. They start, you know, Ukio's character. Yeah, it's create, oh you know, yeah. She's, she makes okonomiyaki, right? But mm-hmm. they kept calling it pancakes, and it's just like it's not a pancake. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, for, for the, for the you don't that put know, soy sauce yeah, on a on a pancake. <laughs> Yeah. yeah okay i want to ask this what's the worst localization you ever uh, seen heard the uh, red whatever are you one of those gamergate creep shows <laughs> that's <laughs> ah, prison school <laughs> yeah. that's one of them um i would say now and this is not because of the story or anything like that this is just because of the the the, the, the script writer the translator yeah okay and that was um, the game Xenogears. Xenogears. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay, the mm. guy couldn't spell for shit, okay? I swear <laughs> to God. Whoever did that, like, there were so many spelling errors throughout the whole thing. Every time I, you know, a character said the word all right. Now, all right is two different words, A-L-L-R-I-G-H-T, right? Whoever did the translation, it was A-L-R-I-G-H-T, <laughs> one word. <laughs> and it was just like, what are you, what is going on here? I so, couldn't. Uh, I sorry. It was one of my uh, favorite games of all time, but I couldn't take it. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you record. I'm just trying to think. I mean, it it depends on what you define. Because some localizations uh, are your your terms. Your terms. The worst you can think of. Oh. I don't know. Um, probably something like. I mean, and, and this is just for me personally. Something yeah. like um. I, I hate seeing crime stories translated because to me, crime stories are, are the best way to learn about another culture to see how they handle yeah. crimes. So like um, there's shows like The Bridge, which was Brun in Swedish or Brun in Danish that was trans. And not only did they, they didn't translate it. They just, they remade it completely and set it in a different country. And it's basically a completely different story. 
And the only reason that they have it called the same thing is because they think they'll make more money off of that. So I, I'd say that's the worst. Is when they're they're only doing it for the brand recognition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mean like uh, what they did with uh, a bit like uh, what they did with World War Z? That's yeah, not exactly. Yes. My oh, God, yes. oh yeah, my it's God. a completely different story. But they know people will have heard of World War Z, so let's just reuse that in in the most cynical, money making way possible. They don't they don't care about producing art. They don't care about being creative or telling a good story. They just want to make money. And they're making money off of the backs of a good thing. I don't. I don't think World War Z's biggest problem was localization. It was the no, idea it that yeah, a thousand you know, zombies could <laughs> piggyback yeah, it's, each other. It's not. It's not even localization wall. because oh. uh, you have a brand. That, you know, just using the name and nothing else. That's yeah. But there's some. I, I, I got a nasty one for you right here. What? I got a nasty, nasty localization for you right okay, here. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Hit it. Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah, at, least it was, at least it wasn't dead or alive. I just got <laughs> Oh my! Or Street just... Fighter live animation. Well, live... <sighs> I think everybody just got a tweet from uh, a viewer here. Uh, we're all tagged in it. The fist of uh, Grayson Richards says the old fist of the North Star movie had the worst dub in his opinion. <laughs> it's, it's well, sometimes rough. sometimes dubs can be a good thing and, and my example for this is the original um yeah. the original iron chef so not the oh, american yeah. remake but the original one with the, t the the terrible dubbing is part of what makes it a great experience in my mind <laughs> uh, oh i i can i can oh. i can give you a nod on that one with the original ninja warrior uh, sasuke's castle sasuke's yes. castle yeah the original Ninja Warrior when they uh, when they were playing it on, it was like, okay, it's it, it's just a it, it's a competition, but you know what? Let's make fun of it. Let's enjoy it for what it is. Because number one, we don't get the we don't get the it's it's not a type of competition you'd see on ESPN. You're not into it. Yeah. But in that, but on the other side, you see people splashing down on mud, get, getting knocked down on uh, on walls. It's like. You know what? There's something to this. There's some hype about it, and if even if you don't understand the the language, and it's, they overdub it with weird voices or just a, or just a peanut gallery commentary. Yeah. Oh my god! Another bad localization like the that card game anime was called uh, Duel Masters. Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 not not Yu-Gi-Oh. Duel Masters. Isn't that what the, what it was translated to? No, that that's name Dual Monsters. That's the name of the game. But there was a series like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was called Dual Masters. It was a different game, and I remember oh. it because uh, that was the case when basically they translated it. When they localized it in America, they made it like uh, a crack through the fourth wall kind of comedy. It, it was absolute nonsense, but it was pretty fun, and I remember it because. Um, Italy didn't th that time they choose not to like translate the Japanese version but to translate the American localized version and that actually made it better because it was otherwise it would have been just a Yu-Gi-Oh knockoff. Uh, huh. <laughs> okay, so I got a question. I got a question for yeah. everybody here. All right, yeah. so we're talking about our worst the worst localization. What do you think is the best? What's a good example of a good localization? Hmm. This, this is oh, quite US controversial, office. but... The Office. What about... The US version of The Office. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's a good one. Yeah. I saw the, the, US... I don't know. I, I, I saw the US version of Red Dwarf and I was throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, the Office is one of those rare examples of, for some, uh, of a, a British company working uh, where it's been localized in America. Mm. I can't think of any others off the top of my uh, head. But yes. uh... Red... I'll, I'll, I'll pause this one in as a as a fifty fifty, uh, and I commented earlier. Robotech slash Macross. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, it, I'll allow it because it, of... because it brought in so much hype. Everybody loves the Meritex. Everybody liked the story. It was a good edit. It fit for the time. 
and it was like the cartoon version of what every kid wanted to do if they if they were Maverick from uh, Top Gun. It's like yeah. Everyone- the With a little less homoeroticism, I think. Um, <laughs> and, then, and, and the problem there on the other the, the, the other fifty percent was okay. You grow up, you see, you hear okay, it's actually a bigger series. Oh, it's actually three series that got spliced into one. Oh, and it brought in the other oh, God. worth of <laughs> series. Season three and three. Okay, I got. I guess, a... Right, oh. go ahead. Okay, I was gonna say um, um, Miyazaki films. Oh yes, the Miyazaki yeah. films were really well done uh, when they translated them to the English, and they kept it true to the original, and um, made it so that there wasn't a whole lot that people had to learn in order to watch mm. them. Maybe that's because maybe, maybe. that's uh, because those are uh, movies, uh, not uh, like yeah. uh, television shows. I get, I find yeah, that uh, in, Ita- in Italy too. When I say that, I say the anime and movies don't really get that much attention when it comes to translating. But that doesn't apply when they go. To movies like Disney movies, Disney movies uh, animations like uh, they're done wonderfully in everything. Mm-hmm. I yeah. guess that's yeah. Well, they basically it's it's hard to call it a dub because, for, for example, Ponyo to, to take one of the Miyazaki examples, mm-hmm. the the actors mm-hmm. in that were Tina Fey, Matt Damon, Liam Neeson, you know, top tier actors. So it's it's almost like they instead of dubbing it, they basically just recorded it twice in two different languages. Might be a more fair description of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, to be fair though, not all like uh, not all uh, good actors can also be good uh, voiceovers. That's true. Yes. Yeah. So or some, some actors are, are better in, in a, with a physical sense. Um, Michael Keaton, for example, you know, the original, I would say, the guy who was a Batman for two movies. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, he's quite an expressive physical actor. You sort of, you sort of need to see him, see him, not just hear him. Uh, <laughs> but some people are just perfectly fine as the voice. Like, Wait, that's weird. I, I didn't picture him looking like that because of various uh, voice roles. I mean, uh, Mel Blanc, for example, um, Man of a Thousand Voices, and John hmm. DiMaggio. Uh, really. John. <laughs> Yes, John DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio is a baseball player. I think I got that. I think, I yeah. think I got that the right way. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah that's not bad considering that I've never seen a baseball game in my life. And... <laughs> okay, well, I know. So he's a mass uh, fan. But, yeah. Okay, another very, very good localization is the uh, the movie version of Old Boy, the Korean movie. Really? I haven't seen that. Oh, really? You you don't know I, it, it, that that's that's an, uh, that's a, that's originally a Japanese manga. Oh, right. well, I didn't okay. know that. Yeah, it's it, a Japanese a... manga. They made that oh. fantastic movie in, uh, in South Korea, and uh, it was originally a manga. And I have to say, I pref- I kind of prefer the movie version to the manga. The Korean See, I didn't know that. Not American version, right? Yeah, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, the I'm American version. Too. Not the American yeah. version. <laughs> yeah, because that one's terrible. So no, 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 no. The South Korean version. The South Korean no, right. version. That whole trilogy is really good, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the the um, Vengeance trilogy, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, the Vengeance for, trilogy. Yeah, exactly. Sympathy Lady for Vengeance. Mr. Vengeance, Old Boy, and Sympathy for Lady Vengeance. <clears throat> Although, Hello? the the yeah the yeah, yeah I was saying, it's a... you were saying yeah, it's a... Aldo. Well, the the original version of Sympathy for Lady Vengeance um, in South Korea, they did this really interesting thing where the over the course of the movies, it starts out as a like a bright, fully colored movie, but over the course of the movie, the colors all fade away, and for the last act, the whole movie's in black and white. But they took that out for the American versions of it, even though they're still in South Korean or they're mm-hmm. still in Korean. They they changed the way that. That's hello. The movie was colored for the American audience. Yo, uh, all right. Yeah. Sh- shades of um, last episode of um, Gunbuster. Gunbuster. <laughs> yes. Oh, manly tears at that ending, which made when I first saw the first episode of Gunbuster Two, Die Buster, it, oh, it quite frankly felt like those members were being pissed on, and you know that's not my scene. Uh, uh, it was just like this. Felt 
weird and wrong. It's like, okay, I get that there's still the theme of the, the main character is a little out of sorts because you know she's trying coming of age, trying to prove herself. But uh, I don't know. The dive buster just just felt so wrong, and I hated it for that. Yeah. But, hey, what do I you know? know? What I, you know what I can't believe is I can't believe nobody's brought up the American version of Sailor Moon yet. Oh, try not to. I, I, I was. Sti- I, I, I was. Now, here's a problem. There, the thing is, you you can love to hate it or hate to love it with the with the American the DIC version of Sailor Moon, but it brought up so many people and it got a lot of people interested, boys, both boys and girls back then, into anime. Yeah, that is very and true. It, that is very true. But like they gender bended characters just so they wouldn't have to like touch on like the gay lesbian stuff yeah they did try to yeah. do it in italy as well to that like they tried to really like, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, italy uh literally um uh, back in the day they also did good dubs uh, once upon a time i mean uh, good translations but they tried to censor the fact that sailor uranus was uh, a lesbian uh, going with uh sailor neptune but they they couldn't do it so it was really it weird is- they couldn't do it well, and uh, everyone anyway know this. Like it's a, uh, it's now she's an icon, a lesbian icon of her childhood. If that is a, if that is even a thing. Also, 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 let me go on a tangent here and I'll add that she's the hottest of the Sailor Warriors. Sorry, I like tall women with short hair. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's you. <laughs> that's all sorry. on you. <laughs> Sorry, I just love it. I just love her. Yeah, I've always been a sailor. I, I was always a sailor Venus guy myself. Uh, <laughs> you want you want the dad to wrap you up in her sailor Venus chain, lobby chain. Uh, she can she can wrap me up anytime. <laughs> Mind you, that's really bad now because, like, okay, I was 15 when I was into it. Okay. Oh my god! So, yeah, she's 14. Those, those characters 14. are all 14 years old, so we oh gotta god, stop. Oh my god! Guys. They're eternal 14 year old. <laughs> She's, she's 2,000 years old now. 2,000 <laughs> year old lollies. Mm. Oh my god. Well, depends. In Italy, uh, 14 is kind of legal unless you have some authority over them. So, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. You know, I think it used to be that age here in Canada. Too. In Sorry? Bad Canada, localization. Card captors. Oh, Not card captors. Sakura. 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 Captors. No. There was a there was a U.S. translation of uh, adaptation of Card Captor Sakura, which started mm-hmm. in episode six once Sharon had appeared. Yes, that yeah. sounds familiar. Card Captors. Um, yes, and uh, pretty, they pretty much took away a lot of uh, Sakura being the main character, and they pretty much uh, it was like a it was like a duel between her and Sharon versus her being the main character. Oh, holy shit! First. Well, the the thing is, uh, the anime version, you know, the anime version of the manga is not, it was censored as well, because there was a big thing about, uh, you know, the black-haired friend of Sakura. Tomoyo being, to, Tomoyo being Sakura sexual? <laughs> no, uh, it, it was about Tomoyo being uh, teacher sexual. Like, in the manga, she had a sexual relationship with the teacher, who was an adult man. Oh, wow. I wasn't aware of that one. Yeah. One localization that I thought was... That I didn't mind, I guess, was the American version of uh, Mensum Hatter Kvino, uh, the the, uh, girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, yeah. I thought it was... It was very different from the original, original, but it was still a good movie. I wish that they had just made it a standalone movie and, and hadn't pretended that it was related to the original, but it was still well done. Yeah, I yes. guess that's what kind of... On the, I, I was pleasantly surprised to learn that it was still being set in Sweden. Yes. Well, you, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, kind you of weird. Sort of, uh, half <clears throat> remake, oh, it's going to be set... You know, uh, but, oh, okay, it's just English language still in Sweden with actors I know and recognize. <laughs> Close yes, to the yeah, it it was all right. It was all right. David Fincher does you know, it was pretty fine work. No, he, yeah, things, he, yeah. One thing, one thing I noticed um, in the US version, the the girl with the dragon tattoo has better tits but worse hair. Priorities. <laughs> 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 well, I, uh, you know, and that is something 
uh, speaking of um, alternate versions, Evangelion, uh, reheat of Evangelion. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, rebuild. There is one thing that is objective. Uh, one thing is ob- for crack money. One one thing is objectively better in the new version. Masato Katsuragi's taste in underwear. Anything else is subjective. <laughs> yes. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, uh, yeah. Didn't they, re- didn't they reboot like just the final last couple of episodes of that series? Like three yeah, times? just a, just a, just last couple of episodes, like the staring contest uh, between uh, Ayago and that fucking congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. Well, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I would probably troll attacking audiences if they annoyed me that much. <laughs> I mean, well, it's like, it... troll, nah, in your face. Well, and, I and... think <laughs> the creator, didn't he, like, didn't he actually, like, lose his, lose his mind at some point there? Or, uh, oh, Hideaki, yeah. Hideaki, uh, Anno, Anno, Anno is his name. He yeah. kind of yeah. did. You can know this by the end of Evangelion. Like, uh, if you yeah. saw the, that movie, you can see he kind of lost his shit by then. Yeah, he lost uh, his mind. The <laughs> show ran out of budget and all. <laughs> it's like, oh, so that's why they're in line drawings. Right. It's yeah. arty. You sure you haven't run out of money again? You split it all on bookers and crack again. <laughs> yeah, and then it oh. turns. <laughs> And then it turned just... into a franchise. Like I read, like uh, there was a manga, like a uh, like a spin-off manga where, uh, uh, yeah, they were like oh, they there's, like, three or four different spin-off mangas. Yeah, uh, but I, th- there was really a really bad one. Like they go to a high school and they have guns uh, called angels. I could be... this this is ridiculous. Like, oh yeah, milk that franchise. Yeah, say, it was. Oh, it was there like a dating yeah. simulator or something that came out at some point? Oh yeah, Girl, like... girlfriend of steel. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Girlfriend of There's, steel. Uh, yeah. In oh Japan. Yeah. In Japan, there was a, a, a what's it called? A branding for a while for Gillette razor blades. Where oh, Gendo yeah. actually shaves off the beard. Blades. Yes, That's I awesome. remember. And That's there's, awesome. and I'm sure I saw. Uh, I don't know if it was when I was in Japan because I, I that I've seen um, Asuka has been uh, advertising UCC coffee. Mm, uh, good coffee. Uh, yes, it's like oh okay. Uh, you, like, that out. you think you think that's bad in Italy? Antonio Banderas is advertising uh, breakfast cookies uh, and uh, snacks. Oof. <laughs> with uh, with how, uh, how like far the mighty have fallen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know because the guy, I mean, he's still getting jobs, but the thing is, I like uh, they they they've always done that. Like they don't do this kind of shit in America or wherever they make the movies, but they do it in other countries, like in Japan. Yes. They're, oh yes. They, Japan like is the, like the, 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 the those commercials where uh, Tommy Lee Jones is a teacher in Japan and like. <laughs> oh the, yeah. You saw that. <laughs> oh yeah. Those were I say, uh, really funny. I've seen um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio advertising uh, credit cards. So, you know, because he got his ass kicked at Kendo. <laughs> but it's like, by a woman. Well, obviously, it's like, it doesn't matter. But he goes, I've got to get my ass kicked. What? Oh, no. Quick. He goes and to stop and buys a load of um, training videos and books. It's like, oh, I've got to put it on my card. Is that okay? <laughs> yes. Hey, there's there's always Arnold, Arnold being the weird genie in those Lipovitan. Uh... Vitality drinks? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my God. It's easy money. Uh, it, well, you, well, I'm not sure if that kind of work is drying up, because previously they would yeah. agree to do it because it was reasonably easy money and it wouldn't be seen in their you know, home uh, territories. Because, you know, who, who's watching Japanese TV uh, as but a general now, rule? But, but now... Now, <laughs> now lots of people are, and... Um, <laughs> People have the internet now, so now we know, and now we see. Now right? we see, and we remember. We now, remember. now we see Tommy Lee Jones being a badass teacher. <laughs> but, you know, I don't think he really minds that. Oh, you okay, know? guys. Um, I guess uh, we, we've been in this for uh, two hours and ten minutes. Uh, this, this is really great. I, I definitely want to do this again. But I guess we should uh, wrap it up for tonight. Uh, I mean, it's almost 1 a.m. here, and... Uh, 
Well, and uh, also EJ has to go, and uh, so um, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so what? Uh, so last thing, since uh, we we all love video games here, I guess. Uh, so what's the the closest release you're excited about? Oh god, Fallout Four. Okay, you rack up. Oh. I don't know. I tend to play a lot of older video games, so I'm just waiting for the new version of Dwarf Fortress at this point. No, I get it. You eagle? There have been some attempts. There's been some attempts. Yeah, true. Uh, uh, hi, uh, well, right now I'm I'm on the Kickstarter for uh, Move Love, and uh, pretty happy that, was, uh, that the one for uh, Grisaya uh, got funded. Uh, as for uh, currently gaming and stuff, um, just waiting for the, the latest patch to Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> you will you're not uh, you're not much of a gamer so no, I, I, I am a filthy casual um... <laughs> <laughs> well it, it can be a movie a TV show anything um, hmm. I, <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose I am kind, kind of excited about episode 7 and maybe the new Mass Effect because I do like the Mass Effect universe it's, it, it's got a lot of it's got a lot going for it you, yeah the ending of uh, Mass Effect 3, not so much going Yeah, through. also Bioware has gone SJW recently, so let's see, yeah. And that's a topic for another session. Yeah, another time. I'm personally <laughs> really excited, yeah, I'm, I'm personally really excited for the Western release of Summon Night 5, uh, because you can't get enough strategy RPGs in this day and age. Oh, no, no, you so can't. Easy. No, you can't. Okay, EJ, wreck. Yeah, it will. Okay. Uh, apropos of nothing, I saw Spectre earlier today. If you like your James Bond, that's quite good. If you don't like James Bond movies, you probably won't enjoy it at all. That yeah. said, the, the the theme song for the opening credits is actually shit. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Sorry, it's not very good. The guy I heard about that, like yeah. A, the guy whines too much, the artist. But hey, as film with Sky, it's brilliant. And that opening sequence is pretty well shot. It was set in Mexico City. Okay, hmm. EJ, record anything you want to shield. We still have a couple of minutes. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, an- <laughs> I'll anti shield something real quick. Uh, <laughs> someone said towards the start of this show, they they said the thing about free speech, um, that you shouldn't say fire in a crowded theater. And yeah. I think it's important to say that the actual quote said, you shouldn't falsely say fire in a crowded theater. If there is fire... You must reserve the right to say so. Obviously, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. That's that's kind of a given. That's a, that's a good <laughs> yeah. errata. That's a good Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I actually, I actually had to say that because uh, earlier this year we had a fire where I work and say, no, this isn't a drill, actual fire. Get out of the building, everybody. Get out of the building. <laughs> We're all gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of shilling, uh, pretty much just. Uh, I run a, a blog, Black Trident Media, which is about uh, free speech and geek culture. Uh, so check out blacktridentmedia.com. And uh, other than that, I ta- I do a lot of social commentary on YouTube at Black Trident TV. So subscribe to me. I'm almost to 1,000. Get me to 1,000. Get, yeah. yeah, get him in there, guys. And uh, you, Eagle, Will, anything? Uh, anything gonna... you want to say? I hope Street Fighter V doesn't suck. Okay, you will? Um, I can't think of anything else to say other than... Um, no, no, don't let the bastards grind you down. At least not without kicking them in the nuts first. <laughs> All right. I'm your host, Menoskan. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, here on Spreaker now that the show has started. We're definitely going to do this podcast again, another episode. You can also find me on YouTube, uh, Menoskan Gaming. And I'll see you guys uh, next time. Uh, thank thanks. you very much for having us on. Th- yes. uh, thank yeah. you for being on, guys. Uh, you're being fantastic. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We're going to do it again. Bye. Bye. Bye.